What's happening, y'all? Riot Starter TV is in the building. I appreciate you rocking with us on this glorious evening. Um, my name is Kalanji Jamachanga. If you are unfamiliar with me, uh, I am here uh, representing Black Power Media, the Black Power Media platform. If it's your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button. You know what I mean? And share and say, listen, man, you know, these folks are bringing something hardcore. So I definitely, you know, we welcome you to Black Power Media. And for those of you who are repeats to uh, all my remixers who who rep the morning show and, and the chat and all that, shout out to y'all. Um, I wanted to, uh, you know, as of late, I've been thinking, I'm like, you know, we, we're we not, I'm looking online and oftentimes we're not seeing um, a lot of folks who need to be seen. You know what I mean? We, we see a lot of uh, a lot of YouTube uh, characters and celebs and all that type stuff. So I kind of wanted to dig deep and, um, you know, reach for reach for some uh, some heavy hitters uh, over the past couple weeks. If you are, like I said, new to this, if you don't follow the channel, we've had everyone on here from uh, Juliana Lumumba, who is the daughter of Patrice Lumumba to Cynthia McKinney, former U.S. Congresswoman, uh, Daruba Ben Wahad. Uh, we had on on Sunday. We actually had Mumia Abu Jamal call it. So if you missed that, please check in on on, on the channel. Uh, yesterday we had uh, Dr. T. Owens Moore, uh, who is one of the foremost authorities on melanin. And I said, man, you know, I can't go back now. You know what I'm saying? We got to keep we got to keep moving hard. I can't just go back to the you know to the you know the the, the, the chatterbox. You know, so I I, I called up. One of the comrades, one of the uh, one of our greatest minds. I'm going to say that. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that. You know what I'm saying? A real sharp brother who's been putting in work and, uh, I mean, a, a walk-in bibliophile. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he is a uh, professor, associate professor of Africana Studies and chair of the Department of Afro-American Studies at Howard University and adjunct faculty at the Howard, Uni Howard School of Law. Uh, he holds a Ph.D. in African-American studies from Temple University and a J.D. from the Ohio State University College of Law. My man's bio is is wild like the Taliban. You know what I mean? Uh, you may have seen him in Ebony Magazine. You may have seen him on Tavis Smiley show, uh, CNN uh, and, and so many other places. But his most important place that you ever seen him and you ever will see him is right here on Riot Started TV. You don't get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? So without further ado, I want to bring in my man, Dr. Greg Carr. What's happening, brother? I'm glad, look, man, this is like you said, command, command place to be, man. I'm so happy to be a rock star, brother Kalanji. Hey, man, I must say at the onset, not only I'm deeply grateful for you having uh, me and in, in adding me to in the conversation. Uh, also, man, <laughs> I can never get enough of this, of renegade culture. Man, y'all cats. <laughs> I mean, no, no shade to the rest of the crew. I don't, I don't, oh, I don't, I, I don't miss, I don't miss BPM shows, man. The remix morning show, right right, but brother, I just, man, I am, I'm so grateful and 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 to be your brother and comrade, especially tonight. Man, listen, thing. thank you, brother. For brother, I, I am, I, and see, now I'm embarrassed because I didn't know you watch Renegade Coaches. You know, we be acting hey, a man, stone I, cold I, fool. I love it, bro. Okay, Are you kidding? okay, oh, man. all right, okay, <laughs> seriously. So, <laughs> so, so cute, so cool. So, you you immune to the motherfuckers and all that. We're gonna oh, 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 yeah, oh, hell, okay, oh, good. Let's in get fact, for my students at hip hop class, I teach man at Howard, uh, I have assigned them to watch some of the conversations y'all be having man because in addition to everything else 
I mean, from the inside, ain't nobody, ain't nobody laying that track down in terms of how hip hop is so connected in the way you move through the world. And, and, and what, what's the old saying? Uh, uh, all of which I saw, some of which I was. Y'all are in the middle of that, man. So I mean, yeah, I respect, listen, brother. <laughs> brother. Let me tell you something, man. You know, and 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 if you've seen anything, you know, I'm usually hard on the intellectuals. I'm like, man, you know, oh, I, don't, to be. I don't really rock with intellectuals like that. But, yeah. But, but, but with you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? There, there, there are exceptions to the rule. You know what I mean? From from the France for non school of thought. You know what I mean? And and the Carter G. Woodson school of thought. You know what I'm saying? These are the folks that uh I reach out to. So definitely uh salute and give thanks for you coming on board on short notice. Right oh no, that was easy, man. I had my, my head eight o'clock class this morning, Tuesdays. Well, every day for us is a long day, so right um, I don't even in, in, in our ancestors as hard as they work. My daddy used to sometimes look at my hands and say, "Let me see your hands." Boy, they ain't, you ain't working, so I'm not. <laughs> no. We had the same. We had the same daddy. You are, you already know, man. You know we ain't done no work, man. <laughs> you know, pretty hands. What's wrong with pretty you? Pretty hands. No question. Like, what's wrong with you, boy? No, I'm trying to be cute. No, nope. yeah. So no, I, no, I, I pretend to be an academic. Oh, and I must say, I'm I, thankfully after uh, 13 years in that chair at Howard. Uh, I was promoted to the back to the faculty. I'm okay. out of the administrative work. Thank goodness. Okay. okay. And, and it couldn't happen a moment too soon. I think uh, part of it was uh, I think they thought they were punishing me, mm. for whatever they thought I, I was or wasn't doing. And I'm very clear, man. You, no faculty member, no adult should ever hide behind children. That's right. So, uh, and the Howard University students who are still involved in the Blackburn takeover. And thank you, by the way, for BPM for covering that for being continuing and faithful in that work uh, i think the bandwagon is getting strong enough now that some negroes who were cowering trying to figure out which way the wind was blowing should be jumping on soon mm -hmm. so we'll probably see some voices but I, I think they thought i had something to do with that 2018 student takeover which i didn't and right. i think they thought that maybe if they could push me out of that chair it would be uh some type of punishment but as usual you know the, the petty bourgeois don't quite understand the way movements work so I was yeah. freed up from that chair. <laughs> so now <laughs> I got a little bit more room to me. So anyway, brother, I mean, yeah. hey, but I just wanted to make that make that observation, make that make that. Connection. Hey, man, since, since, since you you poked the, uh, the beehive and you, you at Howard right now, can, can we get a little update about what's going on before we get get it? Get it oh, of course, of course. To the degree cool. that can the uh, the young people, um, I guess this is what today's the ninth. So we're like on the cusp of day 28. Hmm. Uh, they uh, they really were driven to in many ways uh, occupy some space in the Blackburn University Student Center on the 12th of October. Right. Um, it happened and as as uh, Erica England uh, has discussed Channing Hill and their lawyer, uh, our brother Donald Temple has discussed in, in BPM uh, and the, the April Silver takeover last Friday. Yeah, yeah. shout out to her and Dr. Uh, Dr. Jared Ball, they did a powerful job. Yes. They absolutely did. Two very, yeah. very uh, good comrades, longtime friends. And in April's case, I know y'all go back like car seats, man. That's a New York story. So I already. Man, listen, <laughs> it's funny because of the fact I don't even know if she remembered me because I, I was uh, into hip hop at the time when she was doing it, doing the hip hop pieces at Howard. Uh, I actually brought uh, Smith and Wesson, Wesson and helped the skeleton them through Come back on, in, I think, 94 or something like that. <laughs> You know, I was doing booking and promotions and management and all that type of stuff. So definitely, uh, you know, shout out to the work they were doing. In fact, that's where I saw the movie. Uh, they did a a premiere of Friday there, and 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 Chris Tucker was there. It's legendary. Yes. 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 You were yes. there for that at, at Blackburn, right? Brother. Right. That's right. crazy. Well, you know, right. we got we got to get some of these young people so that I know you don't have. If you could put forty eight hours in a day instead of twenty four, you would. But uh, at this point now, we just need you to sign and talk, man. Let these young people transcribe and you could just edit because this this story got to be preserved and passed on generation to generation, man. Because a lot of these cats out here making a living as quote unquote hip hop scholars, we, 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 we'll say the hate awards maybe for December or something. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, this, this is the thing. So in yeah. that same building, in that same building that you all were in for those early meetings of mm -hmm. hip hop nation, the young people now uh, have occupied that building uh not fully because the building really is in a state of disrepair in many ways that's one of the issues in fact right uh, but they have been there now for close to a month and uh their demands which began with uh they demanded that the president of the university meet with them in person not just them but the student body generally they uh demanded that 
the uh, affiliate trustees be restored to the Howard University Board of Trustees. And affiliate trustees are uh, from groups that are what some people call stakeholders, but members of the university community, student trustees, faculty trustees, alumni trustees. The university uh, board got rid of those trustee positions this summer mm -hmm. and uh, kind of a surreptitious act, although they claim transparency. But that's being fought. And then they um, they wanted a, a tangible plan with deliverables to remedy the housing crisis. And it isn't just about molds and roaches and rats. We know the white facing public uh, media, entertainment media has seized on that. But it's also uh, the uh, lack of affordable housing. And of course, that's attracted attention. Uh, Jamal Bowman from New York, uh, Yana Presley, of course, whose parents right. met actually in housing work, uh, who was, of course, representative in legislature from Boston. And uh, Elizabeth Warren tweeted in support all around the idea of affordable housing. And uh, then they had had to add a fourth demand because the university almost immediately threatened them with uh, punitive action up to and including expulsion. And their fourth demand was a amnesty. They should not receive any punishment for doing something they felt like they had to do. And that movement has con continued to grow and increase a lot of support, uh, not only students, but alumni, uh, faculty, uh, the contingent faculty, the most vulnerable members of a faculty at any university, those folk who literally work class to class, piece, piecing class schedules together uh, for subpar wages. Some of them as little as $3,000 a, a class and you teaching four classes. And that's, you know, if you do that two semesters, that's just $24,000 a year before uh, wow. taxes. And so, I mean, contingent faculty, uh, they're there. They've now joined. Uh, so what happened was now, and I'll end with this, the students occupied Blackburn uh, right now. They're probably, from what I'm told, about 100 students inside somewhere around the hundred mark a little bit north of that and then outside there's been a proliferation of tents so dozens of tents at this point but with not just students um there are several alum who are on the ground there uh there are as well faculty as a faculty tent now contingent faculty i was there friday for a rally um mm -hmm. we're anticipating so uh, the students are their lawyer donald temple who appeared um as I said on um, on the show on Friday, uh, right on, definitely. Yeah, he uh, Donald Temple said that you know they're at the point now they're trying to finish up negotiations for those students to be able to leave the building without punishment, but the issues they've raised will not go away. Um, oh, I, I should say one more thing, Kalaj. I forgot about. I didn't forget about, it, but it just it just came to mind. Okay. The students in the quad. These are uh, women students. Right. Although it probably won't be exclusively women students. The fourth floor uh of um is it crandall hall yeah, baldwin the baldwin students baldwin okay. hall. uh they the baldwin baddies as they call themselves you know hbcus always got this these sisters have filed a class action lawsuit wow. this week against corvius the uh private company that manages uh, some power storms and howard university and it's a class action which means students who are in similar situations in terms of being uh, uh being uh being harmed by Corbius and their neglect of housing uh, can join. So uh, the takeover, when we look back, occupying the building may not may be just the, the, the start of this. So that's what that's where we are as of tonight, brother. Man, listen, uh, first of all, definitely thanks for that update and, and salute yep. to the Howard students for being brave. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because honestly, uh, there, there's some other things going on at a couple other HBCUs that uh, we have comrades and family members, uh, children at right now that they're trying to get together. So I, I can't just speak on it just yet, but we will be oh. breaking it as soon as we can. Okay. And yeah. Ryan started TV. <laughs> hey, man, you know how we do around here, man. We, you know. You're gonna, yes, gonna be sir. a monkey, be a gorilla. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no question, gorilla style, baby. Right on, As the right young on. people say, say less, brother. Hey, say hey, hey, right hey, <laughs> hey, man. Listen, um, you know, a lot of folks don't know that that Howard has a history of rebellions. You know what I'm saying? And uh, one of them, one of the more popular ones, Gil Scott. You know what I'm saying? So, mm. uh, you know, uh, Gil Scott had his situation there. You had uh, uh, in 1989 uh, the, the rebellion over there with, with April and others. You know, I mean, you know, when you think black university, you know, back in the day, we, we were those of us from uh, the inner cities. Uh, uh, you know, again, I'm from Bridgeport, Connecticut, so we didn't have any HBCUs and whatnot. Our closest thing would be Yale. You know, damn well, 
<laughs> That's all right. They had Skip Gates in there trying to hide while oh, the Panthers were up there in New Haven, man. Dang. So, uh, you know, he come out now that he's uh, he's legit and he go get, you know, our friend Abdul, uh, uh, what's my brother's name? Abdul Rahman Shabazz. And that, uh, he investigating the death of Malcolm X 50 years after it's safe. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, it, but, but Yale was terrified by you Negroes in the surrounding community, brother. Man, Always man. have been. Hey, man. I, 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 we, we, we did some things and I, I'm not going to speak on it right here, right? Right now, Again, but, uh, brother. Let's let the let's, yeah, yeah. wait I'm, and see. We I'm, I'm waiting 50 years to a safe like Skip, exactly. but um, <laughs> but 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 definitely. Um, again, thank you for that update. I wanted to uh, for the for the, the viewers, uh, you know, I, I was introduced, uh, I would say officially, uh, by uh, Paul Lee, you know what oh, I'm saying? Who, yeah. who folks, if you're not familiar, when you talk about Malcolm and historians, uh, there's a whole lot of folks out here, but yeah. Paul Lee is someone who dedicated his life. And, uh, you know, I was introduced to Paul Lee by my, my brother, my comrade, Cimarron, who's out in the, uh, the, the Durham area. So shout oh, out to Cimarron yeah. for his work. You know what I'm saying? So it took us a while. I, I know you agreed to come on a while back and we had some complications and difficulties, but yeah, we, ain't no thing. We, you know, we just keep moving and we, we knew we would get there, man. You, you going to have Paul on? Man, I, well, I, I got to reach back out to him. I know he was uh, sick the last time we had reached out to him, but that, on the that West is definitely Coast now. Right? Say it again. He's on the West Coast now. Okay, okay, okay. I we think yeah, he he uh, he picked up some uh, some classes. I want to say he's in the UC system, maybe Berkeley. Okay. I haven't seen Paul, man. Uh, last time I saw Paul is just like every time I see Paul, he was in Detroit. In fact, it was at the Wright Museum, Charles Wright Museum. I was oh, wow. there for uh, African Liberation Day. And you're right, man. Paul Lee, brother, like you said, I mean, it's cast that know uh, what they say in the nation. Those that say don't know and those that know don't say. Man, <laughs> Paul, Paul Lee, man, that Amen. brother. In fact, the first time I met Paul Lee, it's funny, man. This was, um, oh, man, this would have been like in the early 90s, around 94, 93, 94. We had a meeting of the Association for the Study of Classical African Civilizations in Detroit at Joe Lewis. No, at Cobo, Cobo Hall. Oh, and I went to the bookstore, as, as you know, man, as a as a, a member of the, the bookseller guild, man, much respect for that too, man. Yes. Um, the, 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 the oldest continuous bookstore in Detroit at that time was um, Vaughn's bookstore. Okay. Ed Vaughn, who's still alive. He was a Michigan state rep, a bookseller. And I went to Vaughn's bookstore. I snuck away from the conference uh, afternoon and I was in there and I came out with all these books and a brother had pulled up in front of it. And he said, what you doing all those books? I said, oh man, I'm just, you know, he gets about to say, I don't know you brother. I said, oh, how you doing? We'll introduce himself. He said, hold on. You buy them kind of books. He said, let me show you something. So he goes in the trunk of his car and pulls out a postcard. He said, who is that? Now, his, it's, it's the famous picture with Muhammad Ali on one side, Malcolm on the other side, and in the middle of this little dude. I said, oh, that's Mr. Michaud, man. Come on, man. Where's Louis Michaud? I mean, yeah, the bookstore. He said, oh, we're going to hit it up. That was Paul. You know how yeah. Paul, Paul tests you. If you ain't yeah. got to yeah. Yeah. Paul, you yeah. know what yeah. I mean? And this, I, I'll end with this right quick. We I went back. We talked for a long time, man. I said, he said, what's going on? I said, well, the ASCAT conference is in town. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, you want back over? I said, yeah. He said, I'm coming over this afternoon. I'll find you. Wow. A couple of hours later, he walks in. Who does he have with him? Ruff and Little, Malcolm's brother. Wow. He had Malcolm's brother with him, man. He said, wow. I, I want y'all to meet Malcolm. We sat there and talked. That's who Paul Lee is. So all these people writing books. That's right. <laughs> and all these people that meet, Paul Lee is the cat that reads everything and then says, you missed this, you missed this, this some bullshit. You got this right. right. Good job. This here's some bullshit. If, if it passed Paul's test, that's the you good. Then right. you good. No question. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. Well, we, we, we reached out to him to uh, bring him on to talk about Malcolm. Oh, yeah. And uh, like I said, during that time, he wasn't feeling too. He was feeling under weather, whatever. And he said, "Get, uh, get Greg Carl." Oh, so, no. so, so if they, and I'm dead serious. So if, if he was if, being if, kind, if I'm you speak Malcolm like that of him, no, nah. he speak like that of you. Yeah, and, nah. and we're on the right side of history. Yeah, we're on the right side of history, man. Now, if he <laughs> said that about me, he was being kind. But I will, I'll definitely. I can't nobody pinch it. I, I tell you one thing. While we were talking that day, he uh -huh. comes out his pocket with a chewed up, like a business card, right, in a in a baggie. I said, "What's this, Paul?" He said, uh, that's the card Malcolm had in his breast pocket the day he got assassinated. I mean, that's the kind of. You, you, you muted out. Uh, you muted, Greg.
That's okay. the answer to telling me to say less about that. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I kicked the I kicked the little mic the microphone. All I was gonna say is, man, that I um yeah, I, I'm a student man. I I try to keep you know keep on posting with, with these students and do the work at right the on. same time. Cats like Paul Lee, man, these are as you said at the beginning, man, before you brought me in into the conversation. You know, the space that y'all are building in BPM and the work that you've been doing long distance running and then now adding this cyber dimension, bringing those kind of voices into the space. Yeah, we ain't trying to be famous. We ain't trying to get put on. That's right. And that's the most dangerous. Exactly. And them the most dangerous Negroes there are. Paul ain't trying to be (laughs) under them bright lights. (laughs) You got nothing to lose. No question. No question. Never to change. So so check it. So um, you know, I heard through the grapevine that you was a uh a serious uh Carter G. Whips Woodson. Uh uh <laughs> you know, uh they, they they said that 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 that's your guy. Mm. Um I, I wanted to ask you, um, how do you think the ideas of the miseducation of uh the Negro uh correlates with the ideas of of, of Malcolm and Martin? Like is, is there any type of correlation or what would you say? Yeah, uh, for for sure. I mean, yeah, Woodson. Woodson is is my man, just like he's your man. Just like I mean, we sh- we share Woodson with untold millions over the arc of of generations. Um, I think if I had to, if I had to, in in a moment, think about maybe one theme that would be consistent in all three of theirs, three of their those those brothers and and the communities they represent and our people, it might be self determination, in the sense that. Malcolm, yeah, Malcolm too. I was about to say, I was trying to think, they're all products of black institutions and they all fiercely protected black institutions. So, Mm -hmm. you know, Woodson, of course, and, you know, without going into a long uh, piece on him, but we know, of course, coming out of Virginia. um, And one of my favorite pieces from Carter Woodson is a piece that he wrote in the uh, Negro History Bulletin. This was around 1943. It's called My Recollection of Veterans of the Civil War. Because, you know, Woodson was, of course, born in Virginia. His parents, James and Eliza, had been born in enslavement. Neither could read uh, English. And I don't mean they were illiterate. They just couldn't read or write English, as we know, right? So they cl- they certainly weren't illiterate. <laughs> I know. I know. But, uh, it, it, it was on point, actually. No question. No question. And he, and he talks about how his mother actually jumped down in the middle of an attempt to sell his grandmother and her siblings she said, sell me instead of breaking up my little brother from my mother. I mean, it's, man, it's riveting this story he tells. But he, the, the the heart of that little article was really a fulfillment of, of a promise of sorts he made to some brothers who fought in the Civil War. He had two uncles that fought in the Civil War, his mother's brothers. Uh, they had learned how to read and write in the war, in the war as Union, Union Army, and they became the school teachers that taught. Woodson and his brothers and sisters. Again, black institutions. I mean, that that's a black school. I mean, we think about it in Virginia. But um, when he, he he followed his brothers, his own brothers, into the mines, he worked in the coal mines in what is now West Virginia, around Huntington in that area for uh, 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 several years until he spot over there. Serious man, that hard scrabble, alluvian soil. They don't grow nothing, man. Nothing but get them black rocks out the ground. And shout out to that cosplay coal miner Joe Manchin, you bastard. Yes, sir. Yes, anyway, sir. so <laughs> making millions while he's trying yes. to hit Joe yeah, Manchin. Right you got Joe Biden so shook that fool won't even sign the damn climate accord over there in Scotland, man. Joe man. Manchin, blow dry ass, sitting up trying to be the first billionaire <laughs> in West Virginia. But right. Carter G. Wilson mined in those mines, and and uh, he was he was eighteen before he could come out of those mines and go to high school. Uh, wow. He finished high school fairly quickly and then went off to Berea College and the rest is history. But while he was in those mines, he uh, read the newspapers to the brothers who worked in the mines alongside him, the older brothers who could not read. And they, uh, a brother named Oliver Jones, who was a coal miner, had a house, his house. And in the front part of his house was a parlor. And he, they subscribed to all the black newspapers. They had a library they built and Woodson's job, this teenage cat, his job was to read the papers to these brothers and they would tell him stories about their lives, including being veterans of the Civil War. And when they had they would argue about world world history, they would argue about the politics of the day. This would have been Woodson's born 1875. So we're talking about the early 1890s. Like 1889, wow. 90, 91. So they reading all this stuff, man. The New York Age, T. Thomas Fortune. They, they and so then when they and when they, they couldn't find an answer to something, they would deputize Woodson to go look it up. So wow. even though Woodson was the, the second black person to get a PhD from Harvard, 
don't mean nothing. First person of enslaved uh, parents to do that. He, the, the real training he got, research training, was with those brothers. Sure. And, and many in years the trenches. in the trenches, brothers, sitting there in yeah. Oliver Jones's crib. Mm. And so finally, um, when Woodson uh, eventually, of course, founds the Association for Study of Negro Life of History, 1915, Journal of Negro History, 1916, uh, the Negro History Bulletin, 1941, was it? Anyway, I, no, 37, I think it was. But 1943, He's, the, the Negro History Bulletin was for school teachers and school children. It's still the gold standard as far as I'm concerned in the stories. He began to write the stories of those brothers in that article, My Recollection of Veterans of the Civil War. But wow. step by step, even though he went to some white schools, uh, Berea was integrated in Kentucky. Woodson was a product of black institutions, as was Malcolm. Right on. Before the nation, you know, riding the rails with Red Fox and them cats, man, no coming matter. out of Smalls Paradise in New York. I mean, he's shaped by those, as was, of course, uh, most consistently in terms of brick and mortar institutions, Martin King. Right on. So, I mean, all those cats, you know, King, every preacher in King's family until his father's line came out of his mother's line. It's Alberta's line. His grandfather came out of slavery, Willis, his, uh, his great grandfather, his grandfather, A.D. Williams, was rolling with Harry Neil Turner. They started the George Equal Rights League. Man, you know, Turner is a beast. And so, I mean, <laughs> that's his granddaddy. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And, wow. and the daughter married Mike King, who then had to get her hand in marriage from the old man A.D., who scared the shot of Mike King when he first got. I mean, he don't be messing with my daughter, man. So Martin Luther King would always say that, man. And then, of course, you know, uh, Book T. Washington High School, uh, they lowered the admission age at Morehouse to Great Buck Benny Benjamin Mays to keep them boys out of World War II. And his and he King was like a C student coming out of high school, though. Right. When you look at his transcript, he didn't his mother wrote uh Ben uh wrote King uh wrote Ben Mays like uh please, you know, they let him in and the rest is history. All the, all three of those cats came out of black institutions, though. That's the first thing that comes to mind when you talk about the connection. And they believed in the strength, the power, the future the ability of the race. They were That's racing. Awesome. They were race men beyond anything else. I would say those three, those three connected. No, no question. No, no, that, that, that was definitely, uh, you know, a, a good, uh, you know, layout because of the fact that I think that one thing about Carter G. Woodson is, you know, the average cat to tell you about uh, Negro History Week and, and the miseducation of the Negro and it stops there. <laughs> yes, know? sir. Yes, sir. You yes, know, sir. Like, like, like that's all he did. Like, yeah, and like when they tell about the history week, they don't even. There's a whole story to that before even Woodson starts that in 26, I guess it is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Q's had made him an honorary Q, and he agreed to be an Omega in part because he knew that those black Greek letter organizations had networks. So right. he put them to work spreading black history, mm -hmm. <laughs> Negro history. Mm -hmm. week. But mm -hmm. before Negro history week, there were ritual celebrations that Woodson tapped into because by 1926, he's in Washington, D.C. And there were black women who were involved in annual celebrations and rituals. He was very close friends with Nanny Helen Burrow. Uh, mm -hmm. Nanny Helen Burroughs was, man, that's, there's a sister. She and Woodson were very close. She was also close with Martin Luther King's parents. Okay. And so uh, she started a national training school for black girls uh, here in D.C., I mean, it's a whole it's a whole lot of that. But I'm saying but when they talk about Negro History Week, it, it's often that Woodson is the founder. And he was. Right. But anytime you see them, it's like you see us. I mean, what was it? Uh, Andrew Cooper said, when and where I entered the race enters with me. When you see Woodson, you're looking at all those people whose names we don't remember who were doing those practices. So Woodson had the genius, the will. I think more like Malcolm than Martin in this regard. No. Actually, not like either one of them. I started to say Woodson's singular devotion. Never got married. Never had any children. When he died, the next issue of the Negro History Bulletin, uh, Du Bois, who wrote everybody's obituary, Du Bois loved framing people, man, in death. In fact, mm -hmm. I, I, I'll go over and get the copy of Masses and Mainstream from 1950 where he writes Woodson's obituary. It's brilliant, but it's, you know, Woodson, I, I mean, he's always doing that. But then he said, I asked Rayford Logan what he did for fun. So I don't know what he did for fun. Man. Come to find out that the sisters who lived in the Phyllis Wheatley Y, which is about half a block from his house where he would go and eat dinner and eat lunch, they were the ones he would tell stories about when he worked in the Philippines and talked down there and saw U.S. imperialism up close. Uh, it may have been Dylan, I think, Rodriguez. One day y'all had him on. He was talking about Woodson in the Philippines. Um, 
And then it was the school children, man. These kids were like, Wilson would take us for ice cream. Wilson would give us pennies. Wilson would tell us stories. The adults didn't even know, man. <laughs> what car? Yeah. Oh, yes, it was the children because he was a community cat, man. Right, right, right. And that, that that's that's the beauty. Um, that's what's missing beauty. right now. That's what's missing right now. Yes. It's like, uh, you know, those of us who are who are true to the work, at some point, it, it's just like when you get up in age. When you get to a certain age, you don't care about what nobody feel about you, what they think about you. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you happen to be matching, then that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't yeah. you, you're not out to impress. When you're younger, you you know, you gotta wear everything on your sleeve, you yeah. know. But it, it's 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 beautiful when uh your story can be told by the quote unquote least amongst us. No question. You know what I'm saying? When the folks in the street can tell your story. No question. You know, the beautiful thing about the work we do is you can go to a certain city. I, I can go to DC and ask, does anyone know how I can find Dr. Greg Carr? And someone could point me in that direction. No question. You know what I'm saying? And That's I come when... to Atlanta and it'll be the same thing. Hey man, where Kal Kalanji? Everybody knows. <laughs> that, 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 that's that's when the work is being done. No but question. if you're internet only, then nah. you can build invisible universities and mystery schools and right. nobody <laughs> won't know where the hell you at. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I forgot. I, for a split second, I almost forgot where I was. Hey, we this is where I started TV. Don't get it twisted. In a minute, man. You had these cats out here. But they internet gangsters. They ain't never going to leave from behind. They ain't looking, man. <laughs> they ain't going to bust a Concord grape in the fruit fight, brother. No, ain't sir. Oh, that. now, now, now. Now you definitely dating yourself. You done dug back into the latest hey, love. Man. Cool James, brother. When hey. you were rocking a ghost town. <laughs> so don't try to play coast. Uh, what is it? Don't try to play post, clown. When he was roasting uh, 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 Kumo D you know, <laughs> to the man. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That is hip hop. I gotta ask you, man. When did the when did the switch flip for you? From I, I kind of want to keep a left eye on what people think. I'm trying to organize to I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Was there age, man? Was there date, man? I, I, you, you know, I I think that um when when I I came to the realization that uh at some point we all have to go. Wow. We all have to transition. Wow. So, so you know, as they say, I'd rather be a lion, lion for a date than a lamb that lives forever. You know what I'm saying? It's like, regardless of this, this limited time that we're on this planet, we spend time trying to impress other people who are who are insecure themselves. No question. Who, who have shorted shortnesses and and uh, uh, who 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 uh, are looking for uh, the light themselves. And it's like we all, you know, like like the song goes, man. We we all, um, you know, we we slaves trying to fighting over the biggest chain. Who got the biggest chains and the biggest whips? Right. You know what I mean. So at the end of the day, it's like you know, I can impress you with my rap, but you know, we we're in the same game. You know what I mean. So that that that's what it was for me. It's just like, look, man, you know, you can't kill me. I'm gonna die anyway. You know what I'm saying, and, and if you are, uh, you know, in the words of Imam Jamil, if you put me in, uh, mm. in, 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 in the, uh, in, in the prison, I'll be in solitary with my Lord. So you know, so I, I, I care not about all that. So I guess that's where it was. Now, when that happened, I don't know. <laughs> it just, it just. It but just you happened. just realized one day it happened. Man, listen, man. You know, you know. We, <laughs> <laughs> what they say, we'll die, we multiply. You know no what I mean? So, question. Now that's you know. that, it happened to me that way too. I, I didn't, it snuck up on me, man. But what you what you laid out as you as you kind of unpack that and laid out a beautiful, really kind of blueprint for how we should be thinking about this short period we have between eternity to be here. You know that moment when you realize your mortality. I tell I tell the students all the time. I said I think it was sometime around fifty. Hmm. All of a sudden, yeah, I was just like, exactly oh, right. "Fuck, <laughs> what happened?" <laughs> like you said, man. I'm mean, not that I ever really cared, but right. it was like, man, if I'm not. <laughs> man, if I don't even really get in beast no more. I'll be like, man, time is short. I'm not just trying to beef. What is this bill? <laughs> I, I just turned fifty uh, uh, last December, and yes, sir. I, I feel like I'm in dinosaur years. So it's you know, crazy, it's, right? Yeah, it's, it's it's like the elders or whatever. I I, I would see certain elders and OGs, and I'd be like, man, dude, be talking real reckless or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> now I realize it's like, look, motherfucker, I did my part. Sort of like what you said uh, yes. in an interview the other day about Sonia Sanchez. Oh man, uh, when you said something about uh, one of the professors was talking about, you know, they're trying to get tenure. 
And yeah. What, what was that you said? You said she, she said, said I'd never get man, and I should have said in her voice, man. You know how she be? She started blinking. Uh, well, you, you know, we, we all up in you, motherfucker. Right. <laughs> she had that sweet voice when she said that shit, man. We were at Mega Everest, man, right over wow. there in Brooklyn, wow. and she was talking about the the risk that people won't take what fear stops them from doing that's why what you said is so beautiful man and, and you know she tells that story a lot about how she lost her job in new york right you know by standing with the students the students had protested the president wanted to discipline them she stepped in between them and said no that's not going to happen and she didn't realize when she did that that they then made up their mind they weren't going to continue to rehire her and she said i couldn't find a job in new york i had to leave new york wow i mean wow. but 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 here she's on you Right. Oh, of course, no question. But I mean, but at the day, there is no such thing as job security if you're in a revolution. Man, listen. And you can't save your black ass. <laughs> Man, listen. You, you know, I, I met her for the first time uh, a couple years ago. So I was up at uh, Philly's Philly uh, at the uh, International Lock Conference up there. Oh and, yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Yes. Mama Koso arrives and part of her. But I, I was vending, so I have my back to her, and I turn around and see this little old woman and I, i'm looking like man she looked like sonia sanchez so i'm looking i'm like wait that is sonia sanchez so i'm going in in fan mode and she she hasn't looked up yet so then she looked up i said how you doing she said, oh how you doing brother how much for this t-shirt i said what i'm telling you man, man. <laughs> <laughs> i said pick all the sizes you want and she wouldn't no, even let man. me give it to her every, every time oh, no, I, oh, no. she, she, she now now slid the money under something else and the whole nine That's and i said man can i take a picture of you she said well come on if you're coming <laughs> right, that's <her. laughs> that beautiful spirit, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, so that that's a beautiful thing. Um, you you mentioned, uh, you, you made reference to Civil War, right? And 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 again, one of the things I want to talk to you about was Martin and Malcolm. And I remember, um, Mukasa Dada, uh, formerly Mukasa Ricks. Of course, uh, yes. He, he told me a story about 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 uh, about about King, and he was like, yeah. You know, folks, folks be talking about Martin with that nonviolent shit. He said, you know, you see that Bible he walked around with? I said, yeah. He said, that motherfucker carried a 38 in it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it is what? Mikasa. So, you know, he 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 on a whole another plane. But um, I, I wanted to ask you about, uh, you know, because there's this misnomer about the, the civil rights movement that that uh, everything was just about nonviolence. I want, if you don't mind, us touching on uh, self-defense during uh, the civil rights era because of the fact that, you know, you get a lot of these young folks who have lost their damn mind talking about, I am not my ancestors and all that type shit. But I don't know what kind of punk ass ancestors you had. How about and, that? And, but, but the ancestors I have, you certainly not them. No because like, like, like my man said on Carlitos Way, uh, he said, uh, uh, you ain't like me, motherfucker, you's a punk. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh man, what my man said in the Mac shade tree. Anyway, I thought it yeah. <laughs> one of them shade tree Negroes. You, right. you know, right. I won't continue the Western quote because it drives into the ditch of misogyny. But yeah, uh, but yeah at least we, the shade. We got it though. We know. <laughs> yeah, you already know. Right? right on. Right on. Man, man. No, I, I think um, I, well, Kalaji, man, you have one of the one of the finest minds and just best brothers that. I think any of us know right around the corner from you down there, and that's our brother Akinyele Mojo over at Georgia State. Right. On. Uh, you know, with his uh Baba AK with his book, We Will Shoot Back. Definitely shout out to Baba AK for his work. No yes. question, no question. I mean, and who traces that history of self-defense? And of course, we know self-defense started with the first Africans, with the first humans that would be on the planet. And so you I ask the students all the time, say, when did resistance start in Africa? I said, well, the first time somebody put their hands on you and try to make you come someplace you wasn't trying to go. And them hands usually look like you. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, even as Amos Wilson say, black on black violence in the service of white domination. So, but, but, but that having been said, um, there was never a time when we weren't armed, of course, as we know, but AK does an incredible job of really tracing that movement um, and, and then and, 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 and gesturing toward the, the pre so-called civil rights movement. I mean, these academics that talk about the long civil rights movement, like that's a revelation. Right. But right. It's like, you know, the long freedom struggle. It's like the right. freedom right. struggle started when y'all fucked with us and it continues to this day. There go the day. Yeah. <laughs> now, you can, now, Dig take, that up. You know, right. you know what I'm saying? So, but, but in the 30s, the 40s, uh, I'm, I'm reminded, of course, of the, those great Africans, Rose and Raymond Parks. 
Mm -hmm. uh, organizing to raise money for the Scottsboro Boys. You know, right. our brother Robin Kelly wrote his doctoral dissertation on that. It was his first book, Hammer and Ho, Alabama mm -hmm. Communists during the 30s and 40s. And, and, and Rosa Parks, who, of course, man, brilliantly uh, told her own story so many times, not just out of her mouth, but writing. She was constantly writing right. you know, her, some of her papers, many of her papers, in fact, at the Library of Congress. And they had a Rosa Parks exhibit uh, shortly before COVID uh, hit. And I remember going down and just looking at the fact she was always she's writing on the backs of envelopes on napkins. She had notebooks and uh -huh. and and she tells the story of being a little girl falling asleep at her grandfather's feet as he sat in the front room in their little house. And they made them. And she said they would make us uh, my grandparents make us put on all our clothes and go to bed because if the clan came riding through, we might have to leave. But he would be sitting in the rocking chair in the chair with the gun. And she said, I would fall asleep there because, and her, to quote her, I wanted to see him kill a Ku Kluxer. So <laughs> this is Rosa Parks as a little girl. The, was I, a gangster, huh? You know what I'm saying? Little girl, yeah, like, yeah. What happened, man? They kick in the door. I mean, I, if they're going to get us, they're going to get us. At least I want to. Let them have it, boys. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, I mean, when Rosa Parks and that Cleveland Avenue bus put, no, right. I've seen some bullshit on Amazon. Other hey, you seen these damn uh, Rosa Parks Barbie dolls? Man, I saw it, man, uh, with, with the bus and everything. Bro! With the toy Cleveland Avenue bus, and it looked like the white boy sitting at the damn wheel. I, I was like, totally confused, man. I'm like, boy, her her estate sued Outcast. How for, about that? Paying homage homage to her, but you know, you got Mattel or Hasbro, whoever the hell it is, My you God. know, My making God. her look like uh uh what what what's home girl like AOC or somebody? Exactly, you know exactly. I'm, I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> well, like your brother Boots Riley said, the coup, cool, man. Capitalism is like a spider. <laughs> the web is getting tighter. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> like a fighter. I'm yes. like, come on, man. I got Rosa Parks in a fucking Barbie, man, with the bus. But but yeah, I raised that to say that when she's sitting there, and of course Claudette Colvin, uh, who is still right alive. On. Yes, yes, yes. This, I, I, I'm I'm trying to reach out to her too. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it, oh, you if, loaded if, for bear, if, man. If, if you get a plug, then then please let me know. I'm, trying, oh, I'm oh, oh, reaching out for. Yeah. No doubt, it's some uh, it's some people here in DC who I know know her. Let me see, can I figure out? You know, be that. yeah, That'd yeah. Be I mean, I I I'll do what I can, brother. Absolutely, cool. Because cool. um, she, she she's she's one of those unsung heroes. Again, I think that um, you know, they and 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 again, that comes with the whole colorism thing. We know that, but at the same oh, time. At the same time, it's like you know they want to pretend that there was no resistance, and that right. you know that one day Rosa got upset because her feet hurt, nah. and she said, "I ain't gonna move." No, nah, you know no what I'm saying? Question. No question. In the and, story, and right. it, as, and as you know, I mean, in that formation, she was the youth secretary of the MLCP in Montgomery, and yeah. uh, now I'm forgetting about the bow with the gun. We come into Martin, we build the toy deck because, of course, he ends up in Montgomery with those cats, and and, and that leading pillar. In many ways, uh, a brother who uh, we mentioned sometimes, but don't really get into a lot. Uh, the great Edgar Daniel Nixon, E.D. Nixon, a Pullman mm -hmm. man who was in Montgomery, who was over there in MCP for a long time. Um, uh, one of my classmates from uh, from Temple, April Woodson, wrote a book on him, small book. Uh, on ed nixon and i'm waiting for one of these uh vulture academics to who work on people i'm working on ed nixon what the hell does that mean <laughs> you know, i'm going to ride ed nixon's ass into tenure in a nice fat salary so i can be a college that's all that area, right. you know, lecture circuit right no of course, and win the book awards for my open right. ending but, right. but right. anyway but ed right. nixon man a <laughs> uh, 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 a pullman man man out of and out of out of montgomery was part of those formations and miss parks was one of the advisors and mm -hmm. and in terms of violence and nonviolence, you know, that those teenagers who Mrs. Parks was responsible for included some of those young people around uh, the high school there, the segregated high school in um, in Montgomery. Um, and think about, of course, as we, we say, Claudette Colvin, who says that when I got on the bus that day, that white boy finally they, they put me off. And they told me to move and they put their hands on me. I just dug in my hands on, in the seat. You know, she pulled her out of B. Wells. You know, that's how they put out of B. Wells off that train. When she sued the train company, she she right. dug her hands in the, you know, and she said, I felt like I couldn't move because I had just come from class. Talk about Woodson. Right. They celebrated, of course, Negro History Week at the segregated school club at Coven mm -hmm. High School. And they also studied it year round. And she and I forget the name of her teacher, um, but she said we had just finished a lesson. And I felt like I had 
Sojourner Truth on one shoulder and Harriet Tubman on the other shoulder holding me down and they wouldn't let me stand up and get off that bus. So Clyde Coven is a teenage girl, man. And wow. what you really see is it, the teachers. It's the black school. And That's so, right. you know, Miss Park is part of that community. Edie Nixon is part of that community. And so um, the reason I brought her up, though, in terms of the Scottsboro boys is in the 30s, she tells a story about how they, they would meet at different houses to talk about raising money for the Scottsboro boys. Because, of course, mm -hmm. the Communist Party was doing that work, even the NAACP, while the white and them Negroes didn't want to get too close. That bourgeois, That's right. That's right. You, know, yeah. you know, Richard yeah. Wright kind of delves in that little bit of Native Son, man. You ain't really yeah. 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 But, but, but the blacks in places like Alabama, these rural blacks and, and these southerners, they were raising money. And Miss yeah. Park say, before the meeting start, Everybody pull out their gun and put it on the table so that we could just go on. I mean, in other words, they, right. they all had guns, man. Sound like Queen Mother Moore. Queen, right. oh man, speak Garvey, speak, baby. No question. Right. Right. Without Queen a doubt. Moore, we want more used to come to Columbus every year on her birthday. We would have a birthday party for Queen Mother Moore, man. So wow. I got to see Queen Mother Moore many times in wow. Columbus. So shout out to the African Center for Study and Worship, the great Mariba Kelsey, who's there in Atlanta. Uh, right. Bob and Reba will be 95 his next birthday, man. He was a uh, and he is and Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh community, the black community there in Atlanta, man. Them cats, you know, so, old so, he, he, so he's right in Pittsburgh. Yeah, well, he, he's from Pittsburgh. He was born and raised in Pittsburgh. He went to Tuskegee, traveled the world. His man, family. I'm, I'm gonna have to look for him. We, 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 oh, no, we we, I definitely yeah. look. He's still on the wall, man. His uh, his uh, his son and daughters are medical professionals. Uh, two doctors. In fact, his daughter Reba is the president of the Southern Region of ASCAC. In fact, Baba Mukasa's wife is a member of the chapter there in Atlanta. Oh, I mean, well, so everybody, well, 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 okay. exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, ain't no degree of separation. We all, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so, nah, so, nah. but, but I raise that because when King comes to Montgomery trying to make a name for himself, obviously, he trying to escape the shadow of the old man, he, he's, you know, eventually he got to go back to Ebenezer, but <laughs> you know, and take over the full pit, but he's going to come to Dexter Avenue. And of course, he's there, as we know. I mean, all this is twice told story, of course, but. Dexter Avenue is a solidly black middle class, you know, petty bourgeois class. You know, Jim Crow creates a sense of racial solidarity, but they still strivers. And, and they got rid of Vernon Johns mm, <laughs> just right. before him, the brother who was selling watermelons on the property and this kind of thing, talking about black self-determination. Like, bro, you can't have the pastor uh, Dexter Avenue in the shadow of the Montgomery Capitol in right. overall selling watermelons and turnip greens. On that's, the, that's, the, a hell of a, that's a hell of a <laughs> <laughs> you contradiction. Know, Right, you know, right. and you up in my government, you know, right there between the state capitol, it's a few yeah. steps to Dexter Avenue, and between Dexter Avenue and the Montgomery, the state capitol, is that big block of marble with the inscription, this is the first place that Dixie was played in public. I'm like, damn, whoo, boy, you gotta be a that's, southern. That's, 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 that's a hell of a contradiction, ain't it? Bro, it's all right there, like a block and a half, man. So, but but you, you, you have to respect that because of the fact that that's one thing about these crackers in the South. They let you know exactly how they feel. It ain't no misunderstanding, no miscommunication, none of that. But go ahead. I'm sorry. No, man. no, no. I, I please don't, man, because that's why that's why I love being from the South. Wait a minute. Now. So you was raised in Connecticut. Where are your people from? Uh well, my my, my mother's from um the, the, the Greenville, South Carolina area. Okay. You know what I'm saying? How you and, end up in Connecticut, man? man your listen, from where? My, he's actually uh his family side of the family's from Trinidad. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, can see it. I can yeah, see it in your yeah, face, yeah. man. So, yes, sir. Yeah, so that 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 that's I, I I guess that would be the more rebellious side of things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know that South Carolina Negroes known to turn up, man. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. No so, Negroes, boy. <laughs> yeah, so so my mother actually it's funny because of the fact that my mother graduated from the same school as Jesse. So um uh his uh Ingrid, it's funny man. because his mother would actually stay, his mother and uh Rosa Parks would actually stay with my aunt here in Atlanta. She's deceased now. But um, they would uh, come down, and when they were in the Atlanta area, they would stay with her. In fact, um, Jesse's uh, my aunt married Jesse's first cousin. You know what I mean? So oh, they, I think they I heard you say that before. I don't know. Maybe it was in passing on one of the shows. I think might have been. been. Yeah. Might've been. Yeah, I, 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 I ain't claim jumping. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm mean, no reason I yeah. ask is because my mother's father was a farmer in my grandparents' were farmers in Alabama. Uh, Russell County, same county as Michael Jackson's mother's from the Screws family. All them singers okay. is on his mom's line. And uh, but I raise it because my granddaddy got a chance to get a job on the railroad in Connecticut. Wow. And he refused to go because it was too cold. So we might have been born in the same. I mean, that right. my, you know, I wonder what drew you drew drew them into Connecticut. It was almost always jobs, man. Anybody yeah, trying yeah. to yeah, and, and, and that's, 
that, that's exactly what it was. It, it's funny you said that because my grandmother, I had, uh, my grandmother's sister had lived up there. And of course it was that whole great migration to, no to the North. And, 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 and real quick, it's funny because of the fact that I remember uh, when Obama had won uh, the election, uh, my grandmother called me the next day and she was happy. She was like, man, you know, I never in my life thought that I would see a black president. You know, and, and and it was like she she told me a story about how when she used to work for these white folks, she would uh, uh, she was a housekeeper more or less, and uh, and and everything else they needed her to be. Uh, and she talked about how she would cook for them, but she would have to eat in the pantry. Oh man, you know they'll be eating their food at the big table, and she'd have to go eat her own food that she cooked inside the pantry. So so you know although you know of course. I have my, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, there's no question in regards to my politics. You know what I'm saying? I looked at, you know, I, I looked at things symbolically from my grandmother because of the fact that they weren't punks. They were still fighting these crackers. Yeah. But at the same time, I understand like, okay, boom, what you had, what did you have to go to? My mother talks about segregation and, and uh, them fighting on the bus and all that type stuff. And you know what I mean? Because of the fact that, you know, of course she grew up in the sixties and whatnot. So, yeah. you know, so it, it's, it's uh yeah. So that, that's kind of, you know, that's where, where, where the fire comes from. It's a long history, but. um No, but, yeah. it, but it all fits in that same place. And as you, you evoke uh, Baba Mukasa, and when you talk about King being strapped like that, right. which of course doesn't make it, it, he's not an outlier. In fact, the only sane thing would to be either you got the strap or somebody next to you. So, so as we're talking about this, you know, it just, it reminds us that for all of our search for ideological clarity, all of our study, all of our debate, it really comes down to the lived experiences of our people. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, and so so even thinking about Rosa Parks and Raymond Parks and them being strapped when they raising money through the 30s and 40s and 50s, Edie Nixon and them very clear about that um, coming through to the by the time King gets to Dexter Avenue, of course, and comes into a space where there is a classism in the black community, of course, as all, as just about all times. But that classism is also informed with a fierce self-determination thrust and also uh, uh, um, an armed dimension to that um all that congeals into that montgomery bus boy can i think about of course rap abernathy uh who you know of course lived until fairly recently certainly there in atlanta right. and how after they blow up try to blow up king's house you know king and ralph go down looking for gun permits i mean you know at some point you got to make a distinction and even though this is often smoothed over in popular culture like film and for my money, for a popular film, one of the best, and you know, it's not saying much, but it's still better than maybe the alternatives. Uh, for me, have you seen that movie Boycott? It came on HBO. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, you know, I'm Paul Johnson, who was in The Wire, he played in the last season of The Wire. I, I, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Mm. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to see it. Though. It's excellent. In fact, I think it's excellent. You know, it's so funny because Carmody Gojo. Who Jogo, Jogo, who plays Coretta Scott King in that. Uh, oh, plays she plays. Yeah, she, she's awesome. Yeah. She's awesome, man. She, Jen, of course, Jeffrey Wright plays Martin Luther King. That's where they, that's where they met. Okay, I was going to say, I thought that was his ex-wife. Right? Yeah, that's, they okay, met on that okay. set. In fact, okay. Jeffrey Wright tells a story, you know, right from D.C. Jeffrey okay. Wright tells a story like, I was trying to impress her. <laughs> I mean, Martin Luther King, man. That's yeah. what, so, but, but, but the story is based on, uh, I forget the name of the book. It's not Thunder, the Thunder of Angels. Oh, Daybreak of Freedom. I'm looking at the volume over there, which is like the, the, the oral histories of the Montgomery bus boycott. So you see, for example, um, the brother that played uh in Pootie Tang, Dirty Dirty D or whatever. Okay, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Re Re Reggie Kathy, he plays Eden. Right, Nick. right, right, right. It's, it's, um, it's, it's an all-star cast, man. And these wow. cats, what you see is the some of the layers, like for example, they had to buy cars. Because you know they tried to tax the cabs, the black cab right, company right. out of business, so they had they had the the, the, the car uh, carpool, yeah, right. carpool exactly, right. and they purchased right. some cars. Mm. When people would send them money from around, that's the organizing right. right there, right on, straight organizing. And in fact, I got a book over here somewhere, and I won't, I'll never be able to put my hands on it. But it's a it's a volume of testimonies, another book of testimonies from people who were in the boycott. Mm -hmm. Every penny that came into Montgomery for the boycott and they created the Montgomery Improvement Association, all that money went into black banks. 
So what they did was they farmed that money and donations out to black banks across the South, like citizens in Nashville, because King went to fist the speaker. Are you taking checks up there? The white boys couldn't. I mean, so when we think about the bus boycott, it's usually about the bus and the walking and the courage and all that's true. That's right, but what right. we don't normally get a sense of is the full scale resistance, including you even had cats who were unhoused or housing insecure in Montgomery. Their job was to sleep in the cabs. I mean, sleep wow. in the cars. So the we, white we, boys we come there and start some stuff, man. These cats is like, we ready, baby. We, we had a little liquid right. courage. We were knocking you up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody had a role. So right on. Right when we, when we on. talk about nonviolence, that's the edited piece that isn't trying to tell the history. It's trying to send us a message. Y'all don't fight them. So AK, I mean, I think Bob AK does a great job. And of course, between we, we got to get him on here as well. Oh, Absolutely. no question. Because see, because yeah, yeah, yeah. this didn't even be something I really need to be talking about in detail. Because he really, he, uh, Charlie Cobb, our brother Charlie Cobb, right is on, a right snick, uh, yes. from the DC area. His book, which I love, man, that nonviolent stuff will get you killed. And Charlie <laughs> always tells a story that that's what a brother told Martin Luther King in Mississippi after he had heard King speak. Except Charlie, of course, being a good African, he is. He edited it for publication because he said the old man came up to King and said, son, I like what you talk about, uh, but that nonviolent shit will get you killed. <laughs> I'm not giving up my gun. And so right. Tom tells page after page, he's telling the story of all these cats, man, Amzie Moore and all, all them cats that just snick people worship, man. Bob Moses and them worship them. Uh, yes. Dory Ladd, Paul, them. Bob Moses, yes. Oh, the yes. great Bob Moses, right? Because they said, you know, in fact, what was it the first time you went to Mississippi? Of course, Bob Moses talks about Amzie Moore. You know, Amzie Moore's uh, son is a professor uh in chicago and mm -hmm. he's babala in fact i mean wow. so you know all this you know africans we don't get too far from the root but mm -hmm. mega evers of course army veteran strap the only right way on. the back with you get him was shoot him in the back because that brother had to strap in the car i mean it's like hey, <laughs> hey, hey. They, they knew what time it was they knew you know what, what saying? But, but but like the cowards they are you know they, they gotta you know they gotta catch you slipping they gotta you catch you slipping. Saying? no question you know, no you know, question but, but but definitely um you know, and, and, and shout out to Mississippi. I mean, oh, be, yeah. because of the fact that, first Ooh. of all, the fact that you even to even live in Mississippi during that time, that's one thing. But to have the audacity to stand up when you talk about places like Mississippi, uh, Alabama, Louisiana, places like that. These are places, you know, me being from from the north, you know, I mean, it's certain places to this day. <laughs> that that <laughs> you know you you got your, your your eyes up your fist clenched the whole nine yeah. you know what I'm saying because of the fact that you know you you have to be clear about where you're going I, I remember we were going to uh uh Chokwe Lumumba's uh funeral and I was in the car with uh the Ruba and another comrade and we and we we going like a hundred miles an hour through Mississippi I'm scared to death. <laughs> 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 praying that the police don't pull us over because I just got a feeling it ain't going to go well. And all we know is we going home. So that's all I'm going to say. Yes, sir. <laughs> so I'm man. just like, man, I'm but like, man, know, slow down. He said, sometimes you say there. Huh? We say y'all going 60. That's what the Ruben said. You know what yeah, right, right. <laughs> no, but no, but I think it's so funny. And I'm trying to remember who told me this story. Oh, maybe it was Bob. Oh, I wasn't had a black freak. This has been many years. One, may, it may come back to me. But the story was there were some kids, Mississippi, who were in school at Valley, Mississippi Valley State in Itabina, and they were coming home. Hmm. And they got home that night, and they got in and said, you know, we we were worried, we were kind of concerned because it was dark, and the elder was like, no, y'all were good. Because we had eyes on y'all from the time y'all left campus to the time y'all got here. In other that's words, right. and that's what Bob AK writes about in Charlie Cobb and them. They right. had cats who were strapped. Like when we see the documentaries and we see the footage, they marching down the middle of the day. Right. Why ain't right. the Klan shooting them? Because it was cats strapped over there in the bushes. Yeah. Like the Klan yeah. even look up. Yeah. We're going to yeah. end this whole thing. Yeah, we're just dog, dogs and water hoses. You no, know what I'm saying? sir. No, you know? sir. So, I mean, no, I, I think, in fact, sometimes I, I feel safer. In those places, and and you know, you you mentioned another of our great warriors, man. I think about brother uh, about brother Antar, about the Chokwe Antar, yes. and his sister, of course, uh, who uh, what Rakia, who went to Howard Law School. She's a graduate last. In fact, last time I saw Rakia, she was okay. on campus talking to the students. But Baba Chokwe, I used to tell him, man, I say, there's only there's only two lawyers 
who made me think about perhaps I should just practice law for a while, see what it's like. One is Chokwe Lumumba, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the other was Alton Maddox. <laughs> Bob, they had to take Alton's law license, man. Alton said, "Just put, just put twelve in the box. And I'm gonna get your ass off, man." Alton Maddox, man. man, listen, <laughs> man. I, I remember um, him and um, Dick Gregory was, oh. was down here together, and uh, oh, really? Yeah, and 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 uh, I think it was him, Dick Gregory, uh, Cynthia McKinney, Tawana Brawley, oh. and. and, and and they they let me say a few words, and I I felt like I was you know on, on 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 the on the, the banks of heaven, because I, I think that the, the one thing like you know and 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 with you just coming up, the difference between now and uh, back in the day is that you couldn't touch a microphone if you weren't qualified. Oh hell no, wouldn't want to. Nah, nowadays I'm not going no, up there. Shit. Nowadays ain't no shame. You just get on your computer and talk that shit. No. And um, you know, and folks look at you like you the Messiah. Right. You know what I mean? But but definitely um This was this was when they were doing the tour back when they were when they were after Tawana. No, no, no. This this, this was years later. This might have oh, been Oh really? Uh, yeah, yeah. This this is uh man, probably it, it, it had to have been the last 10 years, I would say. Uh yeah, but it was down here in Atlanta. But um, yeah, yeah, no, nah, that that was uh, and I think they, it was some kind of anniversary or whatever, and they had Tawana as a guest. But uh, yeah, man, this is uh, you know, when you talk about j just warriors and freedom fighters and and attorneys, of course, like you said, the automatics and the C Vernon Masons and you know what I'm saying, and and uh, and 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 so many others, you know, of course, Jokeway, um, you know, oftentimes. Folks hear about Johnny Cochran, but I would say pound for pound, round for round, you know, Johnny Cochran was more uh uh what what what's homeboy name? Uh Ben Crump than uh yeah, yeah. Than, than, <laughs> <laughs> you you be you be a kind of Ben Crump, brother. I, yeah, I don't, real. Know, I don't know Ben Crump, but I tell you what, it's so funny, man. You know, we was all in school together, man. We were in Philly when Mowley was in law school. Before okay. Mowley went to law school, so they, okay. Mowley, they, they, Mowley, they was so wow our 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 idols man i say idols but the people we looked up to in terms of president you're exactly right man it was the all maddox's it was the vernon masons it was the chokeway lumumba's um roger wears and Fulton roger Fulton. Ware, no question man yeah. even yeah. even in yeah. terms of white boys you gotta put bill Cunster on that yeah. list man. You, 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 <laughs> can't, you can't talk about it uh no nah, national uh, lawyers Gil uh, man arthur Liz, Cunor, Liz, Liz, uh, uh yeah yeah uh, all of them they, they they'll fight your ass in fact black people like look man you can only do that because you white. Now we come out here and do this shit. Right, <laughs> they right, gonna, right, they gonna right. put you in jail. What's the, what's the white girl they put in jail? They tried to kill her in jail because she represented a uh, college Sheikh Muhammad. Oh, uh, um, Liz Fink. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Matter of fact, she was the Rubens lawyer as well. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, yeah. to me, that's where ideology breaks down. Right on. And we have to be very pragmatic about this. That's right. It's all fun and games till your ass go to jail. Now you need somebody with that digit barcode to get right. our ID to get your ass out of jail. Now, when you right. get out, you can start talking about the system collapse and we got to overthrow the system. But in that moment, when your ass go to jail, <laughs> that's right. You, and you, that, that was Lynn Stewart. Shout out to uh, Lynn Stewart, Lynn Stewart, Stewart. In, the, in, the, in the chat. Exactly. Lynn Stewart and shout out to Bob Boyle and, and some of these other, other um, you know, and, and, and that's important. The difference between, you know, folks talk about white allies. We don't need white allies. We need White comrades, no question. You know what I'm saying? We need folks who we know that are willing uh, to 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 go beyond just these marches and, and and rallies. And they should be the cannon fodder. I mean, shit. Oh, you no know, question. You know, you benefit and, and, off and of it's like that. Volunteer to be the cannon fodder. They, they don't even have to convince them. They already know. Hey, without, without, <laughs> without, without question. Without no question. question. So, hey, so no, hey man, you, you you know us, man. I'm I'm, I'm enjoying this convo. We let, let, let's get a little bit into Martin and Malcolm. So, oh, no, know, we, folks we, like we, they, we, they false advertising. No, no, nah, nah, we, we in fact, in fact, we just laying a foundation to talk we, about we it. Just getting ready. Stitch it all together. That's how right yeah, on, work. right on, yeah. right on, right yeah. on. But 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 I, I wanted to ask you too, um, you know, because of the fact that you know it, it's so many. When we talk about Martin and we talk about Malcolm, we're talking about. Uh, two brothers who for all practical purposes they never saw 40. no these are, these are two brothers who were cut down at age 39. you know what i mean um i want to want to you know people always doing the comparison thing and and they, they talk about the differences you know what would you say some of the similarities in regards to strength because i, I often remind folks you know when you, when you talk about 
you know, a Martin, a Martin King, you know, like you said, just on the strength of 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 rolling with the quote unquote nonviolence. Yes. You had to be a brave, bad dude to face this time and time again. It's not like, you know, in no disrespect, or maybe it is to to, to <laughs> folks like the Sharptons and all of them. You know what I'm saying? They they cool when the cameras is on. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. But Martin, them, they, you know, they didn't care if it was a camera on, you know, they're going to keep on coming. So what would say would you, would you say some of the similarities in strength would be between uh, Martin and Malcolm? I think their minds, first of all. Um, I mean, maybe up until seventh, eighth grade, you could probably make the argument that Malcolm was the better student, not just in terms of, you know, I'm not thinking now in terms of natural ability or talent, but I'm just turning in terms of aspiration. He wanted to be a lawyer, this kind of thing. And I remember when, um, they, we, we almost lost, uh, sister Betty's cache of documents I mean, it was in that st storage place in Florida or whatever, mm -hmm. and, and they put the money together. Schomburg had. I went up there to see. Uh, they put an exhibit together, and you saw Malcolm's called on, and you saw some of his, and they had some of his report cards from when he was a kid. And he's, he's, he's a good student. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, not that Martin was a bad student, but in terms of their minds, I think, uh, how they were surrounded. I know the sister, and I, I had a book over here somewhere. I eventually got it on uh, the mothers of Malcolm and, and, and James Baldwin and them. But as actually a brand new book, let me see if I have it over here. I have it right here. Man, uh, what, what book don't you have? I mean, this is many <laughs> books, but that's why I'm broke, man. On HBC professor salary. They should be throwing you books. No, 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 no. That, that, that's for the Negroes on the approved list. You know? oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, the ones who uh, I remember when Jared wrote his um, I, um, uh, the I mix what I like, the the, the right. mixtape, the book, uh. He the the first quote in there. I was very honored that he actually put it in there, my brother, uh, Jared. It was a quote from a talk I gave it in Philadelphia. We had an ASCAT conference, mm -hmm. and I said, you know, when you get those books with the blurbs on the back by every, all the super friends Negroes that blurb each other's books and call each other superheroes on each other and back of each other's books, that is the book you should never quote. <laughs> That's, right. That's, right. That's the book you read for the sources and then say, okay, I didn't know about that. Thank you. But their interpretation is very nearly worthless. That's but right. uh, uh, the- It's good for theory. He's good practice. for theory. Yeah, you know, right. that's all they're doing, right? So right. But this book just came out. It's very interesting. This is a, a white lady, Jessica Russell, but she befriended and became very close friends to Hilda Little, my Jones, Steve Jones, Hilda Little, Malcolm's sister, uh, her children. And she wrote something called The Life of Louise Norton Little, an extraordinary. This is Malcolm's mother. That's actually her passport photo from the Caribbean. So what she had is access to the documents. So what you see is, for example, and I'll give you a better picture of it. This is her this is her passport from Grenada. So, you know, she left the Caribbean and went to Canada. Uh, it's very interesting because, of course, she disappears from history. She's a victim of state violence. They mm -hmm. put her in uh, in. Let me see. Fat. Here is Malcolm's mother when she's younger, you know, and I'll show you one more picture and then and get to this point in terms of the similarities between the two. Here she is with one of her granddaughters, that's Siobhan's daughter. See, because wow. Malcolm, of course, Malcolm's mother, as you said, she, she outlives Malcolm by decades, man, because right. they get her right. out of that place they had her. Malcolm was alive when they did that. Right. But, but I raise that to say that one of the similarities is strong mothers, strong families. And of course they kill her father, which is ironic because since Earl is in Georgia, you know, the history of Earl and Louise, part of the reason that they leave, I mean, there's colorism involved. Earl had an earlier wife, of course, that is Ella's mother. Of course, you know, mm -hmm. Malcolm goes to live with Ella in Boston. Um, and Ella, man, whoo! Sometimes I go on YouTube, man, Ella Collins, man, was no joke, man. <laughs> you know her? Yeah, listen, listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 and she's rarely mentioned. Rarely yeah. mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely well, shout out. You to hear her, her though, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And did you? Well, that's right. She was up in New England. Did you ever cross paths with her, man? I, I, I never did. I never did. Rondell, I, I, I guess, or, or, or was her nephew. I think I've seen him a couple times with Peter Bailey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw <laughs> Peter Bailey, but I never saw. Never saw. Uh, okay. Yeah, the reason yeah, I mentioned is, you know, when you hear her, and of course, I am the one who socialized Malcolm. Right. It's very clear that the discipline in my house. I'm like, damn, when you hear Malcolm, you say, oh, he was listening to Paul Robeson records in jail. Right. Okay, right. but when you hear his sister, you realize 
He, this was a man shaped by she his impacted family. as well, right? Oh, no question. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah, just yeah. his father. He always follows the Garvey. Like, okay, yeah, but Ella, man. <laughs> and, you know, Ella, of course, I'm very proud of my color because right. I, I was dark-skinned, you see. Malcolm had much, he had some trouble as a child because he was so fair. I mean, <laughs> she, she sounded like, damn. So when you sent Malcolm to live after they broke up Malcolm's family, which, of course, King never experienced growing up in that middle-class piece, but, but the two, in fact, I what was the name of that book that you just said? Oh, this one. By, uh, this is uh, Jessica Russell. It's called okay. "The Life of Louise Norton Little," an extraordinary okay. woman, mother of Malcolm X and her seven. She wow. actually sell. And what's crazy is all these cats winning these worthless book awards. These academics, some of whom are my friends, who should remain nameless at this point. <laughs> this book is self-published. Wow. This is the book on her. So on, what will happen is, of on, course, on Malcolm's mother. Yeah. So some of these Negroes will wait. Yeah. Figure out a way to get at the documents through this. Cash in. We'll, yeah, we'll look up in a year or two and there'll be a Netflix special on Louise and, and, and the right people. But in the me in the meantime, and again, as you said, you talk about allies. Right. Well, she you know, they they trust her to tell the story and she was faithful to it. You know what I'm saying? So hey, I ain't mad at you. Get the stuff out there. But but in terms of the similarities, I think strong families. Both of them, at least initially, until they, you know, the, the cats murder his father and and try to drive his mother insane and break right. up the family, so to speak. But and this is why I said I, I resisted the urge, man, to go and try to curate out because most of my stuff is in storage, man. But but I had the books, the books I had around here. Uh, yeah, Jack O'Dell, mm. who okay, okay. of course was one of King's lieutenants. This is and I and I didn't I didn't dig out the Freedom Ways the actual article the the, the copy it's in but the, it's, it's reprinted in this book called Climbing Jacob's Ladder. Jack mm -hmm. O'Dell is so important who just made transition not too long ago. He talks about how Malcolm and Martin were part of the same basic field of violence in Black America, but that the difference between them is really a distinction that might not necessarily be a distinction with a with a qualitative difference in this regard. Malcolm, of course, raised in the North, uh, Martin in the South, Martin, a kind of urban South, that Atlanta being a source. And then Malcolm's North, you know, he's a teenager before, you know, I mean, although he's sent to Ella, you know, early. Right. Right. But before that, between Omaha and Nebraska, which is interesting, man, because that whole Omaha story, he's born in Omaha, of course. That's heavy. Yet Omaha had the biggest black population in that area, man. I mean, and so Bob Gibson and them cats came out of Omaha. In fact, Bob Gibson yeah, yeah, yeah. took uh, what's the brother, uh, Kurt Flood. Kurt Flood, who of course broke up the free agent stuff in Major League Baseball when they were playing for the Cardinals. Bob Gibson took Kurt Flood to the temple in 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 in, uh, in St. Louis. To hear the, at the nation, you know what I'm saying? Kurt Flood is like Bob Gibson took me to Bob Gibson from Omaha, Malcolm from Omaha. It's like you got these black, right. hardcore black pockets. They, they, they got some serious revolution, even even from yeah. the Panther Party. You know, o Omaha is not a, you know, it, it's not a game. No question. I heard Mama Charlotte, man. Uh, well, did y'all have Mama Charlotte? Was it today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We had her on uh, the Panther reunion, the 55th. Uh, Panther anniversary. Yes. Man, she was uh I, last I saw her, she was at and she don't know me from Adam, but we were at Kansas City for M Buff. <laughs> they had the anniversary of M Buff out yeah. there, but uh, she was in town. But but so 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 the similarity being that while Malcolm was from the north, it's really in some ways the, the rural north, in some way, between there and Lansing, and then eventually Boston, then New York, and the rest is history as we know. But what Jack O'Dell talks about is the the convergences it's almost like and, and actually actually this is why i love my man vincent harding and i got a chance to spend some time with vincent harding before he made transit vincent harding man this book he wrote uh martin Luther king the inconvenient hero mm -hmm. he makes the comparison between martin and malcolm and what he basically says and i tell you who else says that in fact um james cone the theologian right made the transition not too long ago yeah, he I'm actually right we say, we say, uh, yeah, de definitely another, another, another hardcore worker. Matter of fact, I think, um, uh, your man, uh, we had uh, Cornell West on, I believe, oh, Cornell. Uh, oh, moved yeah. into his home or something like that. He sure did. did. Union yeah. Theological Seminary after, after Cone made trans, you know, he, when he left uh, Harvard that second time, he's at Union now, Cornell, no right, question. Right, right. And, uh, and by the way, man, that this is one of the geniuses, it seems to me, of black power media. You know, if black people were talking about something that needed to be talked about. 
you bring them in and have a conversation. That's a beautiful thing. And and I'm watching Cornell over the last since COVID, really. Well, a little bit before, but this COVID thing, it's like he you can see him continuing to develop these different communication. And Cornell don't say no to nobody, which is a beautiful thing. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> to, to an extent. <laughs> no, 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 of course. He's gonna be Cornell, no question. Right, right, you right, call right, everybody right. brother, you gonna win. So no, no, right, right. He's he gonna rap. You know, <laughs> but that conversation y'all had, man, was just powerful. But James Cone writes the afterward to the uh the diary that Haki published of Malcolm. Mm. Because okay. this was the book, this is one of the books that they recovered, right? right. And uh, remember, they they uh, heard Boyd and Ilyasha uh, yes, edited yes, it, yes. and so. Yes. But one of the things Cone says, and 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 Harding says this too, is that you can't talk about Martin without mm -hmm. Malcolm. Right. It's dishonest because mm -hmm. they were both involved. In fact, let me just see. Let me just say what he says. He says um, most whites want blacks to choose Martin over Malcolm. Right. But we blacks and other Americans interested in justice, there's Cone giving the font. I guess he got to do that, but should yeah. never celebrate Martin without giving equal respect to Malcolm. When King was having a dream, Malcolm said, the rest of us Negroes was having a nightmare. Without confronting the nightmare, there will not ever be a chance to create a beloved community. How can we overcome racism if we don't admit how to deep this cancer is embedded in American history and culture? And then they mm -hmm. go on. But what I'm going to say in terms of similarity is what allowed Malcolm to critique Martin like that. And then as he continued to figure out how to connect with Malcolm, sustain that loving critique in something like, for example, when they found, when, when they started the OAAU right. uh, in 1964, you see Malcolm at the founding meeting of the OAAU and it's in Malcolm X speech. It's in a lot of places. He says this, I, I had a copy right there. So he says, um, he says, wait a minute, here we go. Let me see, can I find it? Oh, and one thing we're going to do, we're going to dispatch a wire, a telegram that is, in the name of the Organization of Afro-American Union to Martin Luther King in St. Augustine, Florida, and to Jim Foreman in Mississippi, worded in essence to tell them that if the federal government doesn't come to their aid, call on us. That's right. We will take the responsibility of slipping some brothers into that area who know what to do by any means necessary. One of the similarities is they loved black people. That's right. And because of that love for black people, the thing that they never got a chance to do, and that's what Jack O'Dell talks about, they never got a chance to talk in the way where they could have figured out how to help each other because Malcolm was not closed off to that. King was not closed off to that. The forces that would keep them apart really understood that both of them were essentially in the same art. And here's right. another similarity. One of those, another similarity, and this may be the most important similarity, they had a very keen and developing, I think Martin later than Malcolm, but certainly in that direction of internationalism. Right, right. So you can't call Malcolm a, a Martin a black nationalist, but in many ways he is an internationalist, a radical right. internationalist, not necessarily race first. Especially when he started talking about the war in Vietnam. And oh, also, no yeah, That's hanging right. out with, with, with Stokely and, and That's geez, right. folks like that. That's right. That's you know, right. It's, it's funny you bring that up because of the fact that, uh, you know, when, when I think of OAU, uh, that's another chapter in history that, that folks, they talk about it like it was just he was about to do something. You had folks like Baba Herman Ferguson, who uh, Ooh, I got yeah. the opportunity to interview, um, really? rising power to him. Uh, Yuri yeah. Kochiyama, another uh, yes. comrade on the West Coast or whatever, who I knew. And um, oh, you knew your oh wow, yes, yes, you know, it, I met her uh during Black August. I would host uh the events over uh, the commemorations over in Oakland back in the uh mid 2000s. Uh, they would fly me over and I would see her every year. And wow. it's like I, I walked up to her, right. I watched you talk about that actually, yeah. you talked about that last August, yes, yes. Yeah. So I would walk up to her and I'm like, uh, how you doing? Yuri is Kalanji, oh, Kalanji from Atlanta, and <laughs> how such and such. And her mind was so sharp, and she was well into her late 80s during that time. You know what I mean? But as soon as I say my name, you know, it, it clicked. But I, I, I had interviewed uh, 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 Muhammad Ahmed, uh, formerly Max Stanford. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And, knowing and well, he, knowing well, and still in yes. Philly. No and he, he told a story about when um, they had the situation down at Strawberry Mansion in, in Philadelphia, where uh, they were organizing uh, uh, a strike against these, uh, I mean, what he was organizing against this uh, construction company. 
and the construction company had them attacked and locked up so on and so forth and he said that uh he made a phone call uh from the jail they asked him where he want to call so he said he wanted to call temple number seven so he said he called uh temple number seven in harlem and asked to speak to minister malcolm and he you know he he said that uh malcolm said look you know i could send some folks to you but i you know i can't send them in you know they can't be in nation gear so on and so forth according to muhammad ahmed he said that they had thirty thousand people that showed up down there and rained on 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 that place whatever you know what i'm saying and put things in check but he said the police thought that that uh that he was joking when he said he was calling minister malcolm they're like uh whatever you know what i'm saying but he, he told that story just uh uh just from the organization organizational perspective but I, i'm saying all that to say just the connections between uh the the, the 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 nationalist community and the civil rights community you had snick and the SCLC, you had Ram and and the, and 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 SCLC. I mean, uh, SNCC and I mean, excuse me, SCLC, uh, NAACP, and so many of these uh, different organizations. But I think that one of the things that folks have made attempts to do, particularly white folks, like what you just said, is making a distinction and separating the two, saying, "Okay, boom, either you on this side of the fence or you on that side of the fence." Yeah, you know, in, in Georgia, they will tell you quick when you venture outside of Atlanta. The police pull you over. They say you ain't in Atlanta no more, boy. You in Georgia. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so <laughs> it's clarity. You know what I'm saying? Jeez, but, man. But, but but you know. So I'm saying all that say that uh, they see us as uh, as one threat, and they oh, attempt oh, to no divide question. us as you know the opposite. It's no question. And, and we see each other often as 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 one community. Depending that story you just told with, with uh, uh, Baba Ahmed, uh, Muhammad Ahmed. Um, Who's another unsung hero? Oh man, still on the wall, man. Still on post. That's right. That's still right. on post, man. Um, right. you know, Philly is like a, no yes. question. Philly's yes. like a second home to me, man. I never forget. I was in Daoud Hakim's bookstore on mm -hmm. my hands and knees looking for books, and I came across a copy of then Max Stanford's master's thesis and mm -hmm. Ram. And okay. Okay. I, I called Robin Kelly, and I was like, Man, where is Max Stanford? And he said, I think he's in Cleveland somewhere. Some kind of way, it tracked him down. And, of course, he's a Philly guy. Right. And we got him back to Philly, and that's when he started teaching at Temple. I said, because we got to get, man, Muhammad Ahmad. Like, like we both know, Kalanji, we've known too many of our freedom fighters. That's right. Um, and of course, thank you, man, for always raising the name. Well, you always do. Y'all always do in terms of political prisoners, but of course, uh, the great uh, uh, Imam Jamil Alameen, um, the who even if they are not physically prisoners of the state, um, still struggling to just feed themselves, to move. Right. Muhammad Ahmad should never have any discomfort in life. In his, oh, he just be sitting around telling stories, man. That's and right. so, you know, but he- Rio in the village. No right. question. And he's a warrior though, man. He's still, so- Oh but, man, I got stories, yeah. Oh, I'm sure you already know. Like I said, especially yeah. for him, some of them statues and limitations ain't never off. So, I mean, that's yeah. just- like, But yeah. um, but when yeah. you said that, I, I, it reminds me that you know, if memory serves me correctly, I think I'm pretty much sure. Malcolm set up number 12 in Philly. I think he mm. stood because he lived in Philly for a while, of course. Okay. okay. And he was very close with Jeremiah Shabazz. Okay. Who I didn't know Jeremiah Shabazz. I saw him one time. He came to the temple to give a talk, and uh, my professor, you know, I was interested in listening. But if you know, of course, thinking about this idea that white would look at us all the same, and they have no idea how close we are to each other, particularly in that era, because when you know the history of the nation of Islam in Philly, remember when Malcolm leaves the nation or is trying to get back in the nation, one of the one of the areas he considers going to and has correspondence with, and you any of the stuff talks about, even uh, Manny Marable's flawed book, and of course I'm looking at Jared and Todd's book right here, right. Live Reinvention, uh, yeah. of course, excellent work. Um, yes. But of course, of course, uh, Kamal got a piece in there, Franklin, of course, many, right. among many others. But um, but. Jeremiah Shabazz is one of the points of contact Malcolm reaches out to, but the Philly heads will tell you in a hot minute, which is why when you said that many people showed up, I wonder how many of them were actually from Philly, given the fact that number 12 and was very deeply ensconced in the community and that Philadelphia community included 
as we know, them cats that were also on the other side of the law. <laughs> Sam <laughs> Christian and them boys, man. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I, yeah. even when I was looking at Godfather of Harlem, I said, how y'all gonna do Sam Christian like that, man? Everybody in Philly I know was mad as hell. Cause I mean, right. in fact, the, the story they tell in Philly, man, and it's in, uh, what's the white dude who was a cop, wrote a book called Black Brothers Incorporated about the Philly Black Mafia. Right, 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 right. He right. said, you know, it was known in Philadelphia, don't mess with the Muslims. <laughs> That's right. That's you, right. could, you, could, you could park your car on South Street with a bag full of money in the back seat, and if you put a Quran in the front dash, and you, you know, can see all the way down in the middle. Yeah. No yeah. That's, That's your parking pass. No question. So right. I'm saying, right. if he made a call to number seven, I suspect that call then went to number twelve, and half them cats that came out there, the cops was like, "Man, don't, don't even mess with it. Yeah, these the good. boys." Yeah. <laughs> Let, let them do what they're gonna do, and we'll talk. talk let later. them do what they're gonna do. No question. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know how the police are. They they got real courage until it's in the middle of the night. In some neighborhoods, they don't patrol. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what they say there's too much power for one black man that, that black man to have. No yeah. question. Yeah. And then so, and yeah. then so, now what do you do with that when you're like Malcolm? And this is another similarity. Scene. Both of these guys were embraced by rank and file black people. That's right. But of course, King has a has a foot in both worlds because he came out of that petty bourgeois world. And so that very same cornerstone church he came out of and the family he came out of in Auburn Avenue, you know this much better than I do, obviously, because you're right there in the center of it and you see the implications for it. Right on. And by the way, congratulations on not returning that Howard University graduate and seller of all interests of black people back to office, Kasim Reed. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I know all the politicians are the same, but damn, I'm man, just glad. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's, that, that's the black Trump. Right. Bruh, I'm saying, man, you stuck a whole ass spaceship over there and tried to knock the damn AUC off the hill, and you oh, want yeah. another chance? He's and cold in the white man. And the Cobb County Crackers not coming back That's to right. Atlanta, brother. And, and, and Buckhead getting raised to seed. I wish we could stop them hip hop boys from giving all that damn diamond money to that jewelry <laughs> store they got out there, Buckhead. But either way, what I was about to say is King is part of that world. Right on. So right John on. Wesley Dodds and all them cats who, you know, in the in the in the in the Maynard Jackson line, King could have very easily been part of the petty bourgeoisie. That's right. But right. because he wasn't, but because but because he had feet in both worlds, like when he goes to Chicago, right? When he's there in '67 and uh, and they, they Albert, the hit him in the head and uh, what was that uh, Merritt Park? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, one of the reasons yeah. why the gangs, the organized the organizations of these brothers and sisters. In, in Chicago had respect for King was he moved into the hood. He moved into the project. He went and had, the, he invited these cats over to their apartment in the hood, right. in right. the projects to have conversations. He had public conversations with them, with city officials, because Daly and them couldn't really body him because he had right. the prestige. So now you got to sit with these cats. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. they looked at him. Yeah, it's, it's, they looked at him like, okay, you, you soft, but you also hard. Right. You didn't come up on the south side. You didn't come on the west side of Chicago. You from the south, but, but we you respect know, you based on how you move. We respect you, bro. You get we gotta pass. respect you. No question. Right. And so you can see how that becomes a blueprint of sorts for a young cat like Fred Hampton. Right on. Right on. I mean, and you know. So anyway, I'm saying anyway. So being able to get transcend issues of class, transcend those issues, and build a kind of coalition. King had that ability, and so did Malcolm. So did Malcolm. Right on. Right on. You know, and that's funny because uh, in speaking on that, most people, you know, of course, Martin being from uh, from Atlanta, that's one thing. But when you look at his work, the most significant work that he did was outside of Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Most his most uh, you know the, the things you hear most about the Montgomery boy bus boycott, uh, the 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 letter from Birmingham. You know what I'm saying? Just all of this stuff. His major work was outside of Atlanta. You know what I mean? And it, it's in and, and I I think to this day Atlanta is one of those uh, areas, Georgia itself, where it is hard to crack the shell, and that goes back to the race riots of the early 1900s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So these these uh, crackers in Georgia, they keep these Negroes in check. And it's like, you know, oddly enough, it still draws the elements that need to be here. But at the same time, again, like you talked about earlier, you know, a cat like Kasim Reed, we're talking about, we've had uh, a black mayor in Atlanta for over the past four decades. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So as the Ruba would say, the slaves run the plantation. <laughs> and, and 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 it it is it is clear like these black cops out here man listen you know you up north i remember 
you would feel a little more at ease at one point if it was a black cop pulling you over. Sure. But but now, shit, <laughs> you know. Depends on where you are, no question. Yeah, yeah. No. No. Give me the white boy so I can be clear and I don't make a mistake and think that, you know, that we brothers or something. You know I can't what I'm saying? imagine that, man. I, I can't imagine because I've heard you and Kamal particularly talk about that right now in Atlanta. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now, it's, it's 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 a cold joint. And I, I, I know as the preacher man would say, it's getting late in the evening or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But no, um, we we talking about similarities between Martin and Malcolm, and I think part of that is that confrontation with the question of class. Malcolm never had the baggage that Martin had. That's right. In the sense that Martin was part of that class. Right. And I think Atlanta is probably impen impenetrable in that way because i mean this goes back to du bois and souls of black folk you know on the wings of atlanta when he's right. talking about I me mean, atlanta is a bunch of you know it's it, it, it's a damn train depot <laughs> you know what i'm saying sherman come tear it up and then they basically reconstruct it as the hub and there's probably i mean i'm sure dallas and houston would argue and new orleans will argue but in terms of the neo-colonial extension of enslavement and its afterlives there's no more city there's no more important city than atlanta that's right. But for that reason, right. and of course, Georgia, shit, it was what was it about seven Georgia congressmen in in, uh, in Congress when uh, the Trail of Tears legislation passed by five votes, <laughs> and then they marched them Native Americans and freedmen across the belly of Georgia. I mean, so Georgia plays this particular role, of course, being the 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 the, the, the Australia in some ways of the thirteen colonies because it That's was right. a prison colony for the whites, as we know. But yeah, yeah. But, it, yeah. but Atlanta becomes, and I love the way Du Bois talks about it. Atlanta becomes the symbol of greed. I mean, it, it is really yeah. the symbol of greed. And so when you exchange yeah. out the white bourgeoisie for the black bourgeoisie, they're gonna defend that with their natural life. Oh, <laughs> you know, oh, it yes. can't be broken. Yes. So, so King couldn't penetrate Atlanta. But what That's he right. does, though, is leverage that Atlanta prestige in a way. In fact, it's so interesting. There's a cat at Morehouse now. White dude. Oh, man, I wish I had. I thought I had his book somewhere around here. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, here he is. It just came out. It's called Prophet of Discontent. Martin Luther King and the Critique of Racial Capitalism. Mm -hmm. Andrew Douglas, he's at Morehouse. And his other brother, Jared Loggins, is a Morehouse grad. He's at Amherst College. But the okay. thing about it, it opens with this. And you're going to love this, Kalanji. This is shout out to Andrew Young. Okay. <laughs> he, says, he, he says on March, this is the first chapter. He, he, he says, on March 27, 1968, a week before he was killed in Memphis, Martin Luther King Jr. joined Stanley Levison, Andrew Young, and several other confidants for in, an evening gathering at the New York City apartment of the singer and civil rights activist Harry Belafonte. Mm -hmm. Earlier that day, King had met with the poet and Mary Baraka in Newark, a city still reeling from the deadly riots of the previous summer. This is a week before he was killed. Wow. And it was a city King feared that was poised to erupt all over again. At the time, King was working to organize the poor people's campaign. It goes on, goes on. And in New York that evening, he was in a surly mood. This is what the quote from, from Belafonte. He confided in Belafonte and others that Newark and his meeting with the militant Baraka had gotten to him. That suffocating conditions there and an increasing willingness to among the city's youth to embrace violent resistance tactics were once again telling his long haul strategy of nonviolent change, testing it. King says this, I wholly embrace everything they feel, King said of the militant contingent in Newark. I have more in common with these young people than with anybody else in this movement. He says it's a week before he dies. He says, I feel their rage. I feel their pain. I feel their frustration. It's the system that's the problem and it's choking the breath of our lives. Now watch this. Here comes, here comes, a, here comes Andrew Young. I don't know, Martin, Young said. It's not the entire system. It's only part of it. And I think we can fix that. King was having none of it. Quote, I don't need to hear from you, Andy. He clapped back. You're a capitalist. And I'm mm. wow, wow, this Andrew Young. So, Andrew Young, and Dr. King, well, no, let's go to the videotape. Yes, <laughs> Warner Wolf. A right. week before the man was passed, he said, I don't want to hear from you, Andy. You're a capitalist, and I am not. It, it's, funny it is. You, you, right. it, it's, it, it's funny you mentioned Andy Young because of the fact that he is one of the people who endorsed Kasim Reed, of course, this last election. Come you know on, what I'm saying? Kasim Reed ass was up here a couple of weeks ago. He they was making it rain at some fundraiser. The president of Howard was there. All wow. them Negroes making it rain. And guess where they got him? Retired. Mm. They mm. they all endorsed him. That's crazy. What's that about, Kalaji? Hey man, listen, man. I'm, I, you know me. I'm just a, a a ranting, raving lunatic. So you know what I'm saying. It makes two of us, brother. <laughs> hey, hey, brother. Let me tell you something, man. Uh, 
you know, we, we, we're going to somehow end up drafting you. Tell Karen Hunter don't get mad at me. You know what I'm oh, saying? Don't worry. It's, it's, don't it's worry. No, 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 we set that up, man. Hey, so we're going to do a show called The Gentleman and the Gangster. So anyway. <laughs> uh. <laughs> hey, look, man. My, look, the thing I love about that sister is, you know, we live in a system where we have to build some institutions. And COVID right. then jailbreak everything. The university right. is done. That's right. You right. can't keep charging kids. 30, 40, 50,000 dollars a year. That's crazy. It's done. Now at the same time, we have to invest in systems that we control. At least we know we don't control nothing online. They can pull the master switches. Tim, you right. That's right. That's but right. that having been said, you know, this model that we're building out now, this narrative thing in Nubia, is really an attempt to create a space that can link with other spaces ultimately so this is not that, you know, that, that, that's that's awesome man i, I see yeah. the work and and that's what we're doing with bpm that's why it's one of the reasons in right. fact this, this is my young girl right here she okay. got the john henry clark shout out to my my girl uh afia zakia who okay. is uh running for president of the african heritage Studies association she's in mississippi and they did a volume on dr dr clark's work and wow. you know um in fact well, that's another footnote. But this young girl got a copy of the book, and then she held the book up to her face, man. Since so my newbie is joining, I, I tell her all the time, "I'm wearing your joint because the next generation is coming." That's um, a good thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, we, I, uh, we gonna win, you know? You know, no, we definitely gonna win. I need to ask you, man. Do you know um, Anna Swanson? Is she still? In, Mama Anna is. Uh, I think she's in. She's in Atlanta now. She was John Clark's secretary. You know what? I, I know. I, I know exactly who you're talking about. Um, I, I thought she had, she was going by another name. I could be wrong. But she probably she have an African name too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah, I know exactly Anna, what you're talking about. I, I haven't seen this in years. Lady. Yeah. 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 Short with glasses. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but yeah. If you ever call John, when you call John Henry Clark House, if you call in the daytime, she might answer the phone. At night, he gonna answer the phone. That's right. Because he would post, they would post him up in the oh man, and that's the dude I yeah. missed, man. Man, Clark, shout out to Dr. Clark, Dr. Yeah. Ben. Yeah. Uh, like we like we was talking about earlier, the whole first world alliance, you know what oh. I mean? Uh sister Kefra, brother Bill, uh brother. you know, I mean it, it, and, and that, that's Turner, man, Autumn yeah, Cat, yeah. man. Yeah. And th this is this is what we this is the effort that we're we're making with BPM because uh the one thing that was beautiful about Harlem uh back in the day with First World Alliance, you can go to this church every saturday and you'll see uh uh theophile benga uh you might see uh uh donna richardson who's now known as mama marimba Ani. yes you know indeed you yes, might see indeed. Dale jones you might see the war you know, correspondent oh man yes, you digging yes, in the face boy. Yes, yes yes and you know I, I i feel bad because of the fact that i was supposed to interview Dale. um Three weeks before he transitioned, really? he told me he was sick. So he said, call me back on Monday. And I never called him back. And he ended up transitioning from there. But it was so you know. sudden, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, I'm, I'm ashamed to say I, I lost track of Deke, man. I live about four blocks from 52nd right there. Mm. <laughs> That's back when Umar Johnson was walking him down 52nd Street in them T-skirts selling uh selling cassettes. <laughs> That's a story for another day. <laughs> but uh, we, we, we bringing you back for it. Don't oh, trip. yeah, now we had to have that conversation. <laughs> Wow, but but no man. So first world to your point, man. That listen, yes. first world was Madison Square Garden. Brothers, yes. I listen, lived in Columbus, listen. Ohio. The, the, the after my second year of law school, I clerked for the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, 99 Hudson Street. Mm -hmm. And my man Tony Brown, who was getting his master's in UCLA in black studies. That's why Tony I went to no I wait. No, nah, yeah, no. Nah, okay. okay. Another okay. Tony Brown asked his people in the Caribbean, he's from Brooklyn. Okay. Tony is now at Hunter College. He's actually mm -hmm. he's actually in the department that the Clark was in. Tony took me to First World for the first time because we used to, man, look, if anybody was in New York, I forget who the sister was uh, or the brother who ran the tapes in the back. I, I can't. I, uh, you know I, can't, I know exactly what you're talking we about. We used to send off of them tapes, man. He, he, was get, he was getting all my money when I was coming. All of it. Look, we, but, uh, and, we, and we would mail money to them, man, to wow. First World. The, yeah. The they, 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 would, they would send you. There wasn't no email. They would oh, send you no. in the mail. You'll get a list. Of who's gonna be speaking for the next couple months? That's it. You know what I'm saying? And and you get to choose. Uh, I remember the most unknown person at that time to me was Booker T. Coleman, Booker who is now T. known as uh Hiawatha uh Kazimbi. Ka no, Ka yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So that that, that was Booker the first T. time. Coleman, man. Yeah, yeah, that was the first time I ever saw him. I'm like, I don't know who this is, but I know you know what I mean. But but yeah, and everybody, that, man, Charles Finch. Yes, Jacob Carruthers would come. I mean, you cats, man. Oh, uh, uh, what's my man? Francis Cress Wilson. Francis uh, Cress. Yeah, uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was Scobie, man. Scobie. Yeah. Oh man, Scobie. Woo. What was uh what was that the band's running partner? This would have been Earth Simmons, George Simmons. George Simmons. Oh, um <laughs> yes, uh Barashango. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Philadelphia. Yes, sir. I mean, th- these are all folks who, you know, to, to these the, the new kids on the block, you know, those names don't even, you know, the fact that some of these names that are mentioned right now are not mentioned. And right. some of the names that folks do know, I mean, it's a travesty. And not only that, I see there are certain folks, and I'm not gonna call their names just yet. I'm gonna wait till I get a little bit older, <laughs> and I'm gonna start pointing out the 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 the, the, the uh, scholarship and and lectures that they stole oh, from right. these folks because I still got tapes of some of these lectures that they they memorized verbatim. Verbatim, you know what I'm and I'm like, wow, like why does that sound familiar? You know, it's, shout it's, out to the Dr. Bobby E. Wrights and all those good people. Oh, Bobby Wright, put, man. Put that, put that work in. Yes. That's the people in Chicago, man. You know, it's funny, Kalanji. I know we, 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 we like I said, we, we wind into a close, but the, the, the challenge we have now, like when Dr. King was coming up, because of, you know, American apartheid, yes. those scholars, the street scholars were there. You know, the mm-hmm. F.W. Hummy Robbies in, in Chicago, Charles Seifert in New York, and cats around that o'clock, Willis Huggins, who had professional training, but I mean, now we're going back to the 30s, obviously. For, yes, but, yes. but, but the model for academic work, there still was class, but it was trapped within rate, within the apartheid system. In that period, we were fortunate enough to, to kind of come of age in the lines were still blurred. Right. So yeah, you had Wade Nobles and Jake Perrella right. and them. You had Marimba Ani or yes. you know Donna Richards, as you say, Donna Moses. You know yes. Bob Moses, former yes. right, right. Yes. Richards and then um, yes. I'll never forget standing there on the corner one at one evening. We had driven up from Philly, and I watched Mama Marimba make the cat that was selling tapes on the corner take all her stuff off the table because you know how they would look, the record her and then not you know she don't play. Okay. <laughs> you know, she's like. She was on my dissertation committee, man. In fact, to my this day, she don't play. You no, know, she don't play, man. My dissertation, my, in yeah. fact, my dissertation committee was Obinga, Marimba Ani, Jacob Carruthers. Wait, 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 wait. You, said, you, you said Obinga. Yeah, he was my major. Marimba, and who? Uh, Marimba, um, uh, Jacob Carruthers, because you know I'm real close with Bobby Jetty. I, so, I need, I need, I need you to do one thing before you even go all the way in there. I need you to tell the people who Theophile Obinga is because oh, no. of the fact that again, I hear people quoting Shake Out the Joke, but they don't know some of the brains and the minds behind that no so absolutely. please do me that service real oh, yeah. quick yeah i mean thir- in, in, in 30 seconds in many ways shake out the joke the pharaoh whose only trip to the united states of course was in atlanta mm-hmm. when he came wow. there in 84 yeah morehouse college hosted him you know uh, dean carter and them know them stories back at charles finch you know but he was he and is dip up still alive in That's congo right. in his uh, late 80s well, mid 80s he was and is Shake out the jokes, junior protege. That's right. He's from Congo, went to school in France, like Shake out the joke, studied Medi Nature and other areas as well. And in 1974, of course, the legendary confrontation between Jope and Obenga and all the Egyptologists in Cairo, Egypt, the United Nations convening about the race of the ancient Egyptians. In that room, Obenga was the linguist. Even though Shake out the joke had mastered Medi Nature, it was. Really, the one with the gift of languages was still follow Benga. He is the most wow. gifted language student, man. I remember, I, and I was Obenga's assistant. I was wow. his teaching assistant. Uh, Mario Beatty, my brother, Mario Beatty, was like his intellectual. Like he would, he he and Mario would go and copy whole books out of the University of Pennsylvania Library. And then when Obenga went back to Congo, I had to ship all that stuff out to him. I mean, like wow. all these, but but. My job was to teach Obinga's undergraduate classes while they were over there doing that. And then I would go to Obinga's office and I come in the office, little office at Temple. He'd be, he'd have his back to the door. He'd just sitting there humming. You look over his shoulder. He, he wouldn't write on line notebook paper. He had, he would take a, a ream of copy paper and just rip it open. And, and so he would have, hey, what is he doing? This cat's teaching himself Hebrew, man. Wow. I mean he he's so fun he would learn other languages. You know what I'm saying? I, I met him, I met him one time uh officially. I was hosting uh again Black August. He spoke at uh one of the Black Augusts out in uh in Oakland. On the Bay oh, Area, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I, I was just like, wow, man, this is and, and it was crazy because of the fact that a lot of folks, and that, that's why I said, you know, uh 
you know, give a little little cursory glance for him. You know what I'm saying? That a lot of folks just didn't know who he was. And and just like so many of the people that you're talking about, uh, the Dr. Jacob Crothers over at uh, Inner City Studies. And, yes. You know what I'm saying? Just so many intellectual warfare, one of the most dynamic pieces when you're talking about reading, you know, him and Dr. Amos Wilson and all these folks. These are people whose names, like you said, we, we're not hearing about. And these, if you're talking about studying, you you think you thinking if you're not hitting up some of these folks right here, man. That's right. So yes. Anyway, man, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, man. you didn't no. cut. No, no, no. This is a very having a flashback. Kalaji, we haven't. It's so it's so funny, man, because you remember, I remember, and Jerry tells these stories too when he was delivering food in Baltimore, and he get the tapes, man, from our man's uh, up in Baltimore, everyone's place up there on North Avenue, Bobby yes, Nati. Yes, I saw Nati yes. and Cobra a couple weeks ago. In fact, wow, the Trini, man, they, the homie, man, yes, <laughs> the yes, the yes, man. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So, but. <laughs> For us, that stuff was gold, man, because it was scarcity. Mm. But just about everybody you've named, certainly not everything they ever did that was recorded, but enough of what each of those people that you just named that we're talking about did that was recorded is now available on the Internet. It's like there's an ocean, but there's no map. That's right. That's right. So now people don't even realize the things we used to. Man, if you got an Amos Wilson tape, I'm talking about we, man, we was in Columbus, <laughs> you understand? Not Georgia, Ohio. So when y'all right. was in New York, the, and even in New mm -hmm. York, man, the th the thing you were Ohio State or what? Yeah, Ohio State. Mm, yeah, okay. well, well, I went to right. undergrad at Tennessee State. I was in Nashville. Okay. I, uh, I and, stayed out there briefly. Uh, uh, around the corner from that Wendy's Museum. I can't even think of the name of the street over there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. People think all, the world all, all I gotta do is say that you know what I'm talking you about. No question. The, okay. the, the, the world is tiny. People think the world is large. The black world is like uh, one room, really. <laughs> that's right. That's so, right. But that's I think there's there's some kind of trade off, and I don't know how to do it. You you really kind of put your finger on it a minute ago. When you have so much available, it almost becomes difficult to discipline yourself to try to figure out how to go about doing that kind of work. And so when I look at, and you know, these cats that are all now all over YouTube and streaming and Facebook right, live, yeah. or whatever the platforms, it's hard for me to get mad at them in the sense that, you know, they, they see the outcome. They see that they, 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 yeah. you know, yeah. pantomime and model the, the, the rhetoric, but study, man, John Clark, you, just like you said, you wouldn't want to like, right. brother, man. Right. John, right. I remember Charcy McIntyre and when he was raising money oh my to get the right. reading machine. For name I hadn't heard in a while. Go oh, Charcy McIntyre. Look, look, people talking about the new Jim Crow. Go right. get Charcy McIntyre's criminalizing a race. No shade on Michelle Alexander, but let's right. be clear. This work has let's, been done let's, before. Let's keep it solid. Just right. keep it solid, man. Or Sidney Wilhelm, who needs the Negro? I mean, we can go back. That's right. But, That's right. but, but, but I raise like to say that. You know, like you said, somebody tell you, okay, your your assignment is to read the announcements or to introduce a speaker. You 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 mortify. Right. We all felt that way about asking these elders questions. So with John Clark, man, who I knew for about the last ten years of his life, because we would watch Clark tapes, watch Clark, and then I got to New York, got to sit there first word on the floor, because as you know, it was always standing room only. So I just went and sat right on the floor in front of the, the, the little table where he would sit. Right? Right, right. I wouldn't even ask John Henry Clark a question until I had read just about everything I could find that he had written, listened to. So then when I asked him a question, I asked him about Hubert Henry Harrison. Mm -hmm. This would have been around, I don't know, maybe 1989, 90. I'm asking him about uh, Harrison. And he asked me, what makes you ask that? And I said, well, I read When Africa Awakes and I, I read The Negro in the Nation because you couldn't get them anywhere. You know, you were a bookseller. Right. You yeah. know who the cat who had them. You remember E. Curtis Alexander? <laughs> Curtis Alexander was out of Virginia. He used to he used to photocopy the book. And they were, uh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. You remember uh, axioms and quotations of Yosef Ben Yachin. And you remember <laughs> that little book? <laughs> wow. It? Wow. It's not the wow. Anyway, that's the story for another. I can't even tell that. I don't care. We just own it. But anyway, you know, his son Kwame is now huge in YA. Young okay. adult literature, Kwame Alexander. Okay. So okay. Okay. at any rate, uh, Clark, based on the question you asked some elders, they would know you were serious. That's right. That's and at that point, you could apprentice with them. But if you just asked them, so tell me, uh, what should I read first? Man, listen, no, listen. That's not like, 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 like you just said, you know what I'm saying? It's certain institutions and certain individuals. When you say certain names, you can gauge where a person's at. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because because yeah, exactly. the majority of what, what we're talking about right now, these names right here are names that, you know, 
these are the people that unfortunately so many of them are ancestors but oh. these are the folks that i would have brought on a riot starter tv because of the fact that you know it's important right now you have it, it's a few of them left the the the, the, the dr smalls and the dr jeffries and the students of That's of right. uh john henry clark and and, and right. uh dr ben and all of those well, folks. Well, you brought on one the other day when you mentioned t on was more man Right on. Yesterday, matter of fact, he shouted you out. Right yeah, on. Yeah, last time we saw him, man, we me and Mario, we were in Kemet. We had That's to He was that, yeah, we were told. in Kemet. He was leaving. He was coming. That's right. that. More man, more is the inheritor of that whole discussion, man. Without all them mean. Black Dot, Richard King, all them boys, yes. man, uh, Sek yes. Matt Newton, uh, Tion's more. Carol I mean, Barnes, right? Carol, oh, oh, come on, man, Melanin, yeah. the chemical yeah. key to black greatness. Hey, hey, y'all, look, we got to re. Hey, hey we, we, we had to come back on here, man. Yeah, we replay this, man. Hey, we, we, <laughs> we, 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 we now went everywhere, and and that's oh uh, man. But you know, you know what though, uh, uh, Dr. Carr, you know, no, Craig, it's, man, it's come funny. On, man. <laughs> it's funny because uh, you know, I'm, I, I, I've been glancing at the chat every now and then, and I think that um, uh, you know, we're not supposed to be talking. In the eyes, this is that separation that we talked about earlier. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? Because the one that we, we don't give a damn about. <laughs> exactly. We, we're two extremes of of of, of, a, of the same candle, and I think that uh, you know, this is what brings on revolution. We have to burn the candle at all ends. You know what I'm saying? It, it's not either. Yeah, it can't be. And I said all ends. I ain't all talking is, about. Bro. I ain't Just talking about both. Fire. <laughs> every, yeah, set that moment on fire, and that's what has to take place if um. If, if, if we're going to be serious about what it is, it's like right now we get so caught up in, in the cult of personality. We get caught so caught up in, uh, you know, um, who like who and all that type shit. I don't like most of the people I work with. You right. know what I'm saying? And I'm sure they don't like me, but that's OK. Who likes I know the difference between a comrade that? and a friend. <laughs> right. So, exactly. Yeah. I said, who, who likes themselves all the time? Listen, I don't even <laughs> like me at the time. No though. question. That's what I'm saying, me. I say, well, yes. what are you talking about? Hey, look, yes. stop watching wrestling and playing video games. This is no. not about people. Martin and Malcolm. That's, right. that's what James Cone said. Y'all got these cats like they rock them, sock them robots. They were not enemies. Not at all. And it's right. certainly after Malcolm left the nation. You can look at Malcolm in 63, critiquing the march on Washington. He leads the nation. And by 64, what you really get a sense of is you'd have been talking this cat the whole time. Right. But a you know, the other thing about that, when you when you talk about Malcolm, for all practical purposes, in, in regards to uh, consciousness or being on the right side of history, shall I say, yes. I mean, it, it's like, what was it, like 12 years? You know what That's I'm saying? It. I mean, coming into this thing and, and the work that he did in that time period, again, we're talking about two men who were 39 years old when they was assassinated. And I think that when, you know, there's a lot of criticism around King, but I respect the fact that although he made mistakes and he was in error a lot, you know, um, his intentions were pure. And Absolutely. I think that once he got with, uh, I remember listening to uh, Kwame Torrey talking about, uh, you know, he called Dr. King one day. He said, hey, you remember such and such? He said, yeah, yeah. How you doing? He said, yeah, man. You know, he got killed over in Vietnam. You know what I'm saying? And he said it, it and I'm paraphrasing, but he said it shook King and King called him back, uh, called him and said, uh, look here, Kwame, I'm going a, I'm to a be uh, uh, Stokely. I'm going to be uh, preaching on Sunday. I want you to come by the church. And he said, oh, King he said, no, no, I want you to come through. And he said that's when he came with the why I opposed the war in Vietnam. That's right. And that's what took him to a whole nother angle and a whole nother level because of the fact that uh, as, as Malcolm talked about, we talk about being nonviolent uh, in America when when they're sending us to be violent in Vietnam and these Vietnamese people didn't do jack shit to us. You know what I'm saying? But here in America, they want you to turn the other cheek. That's so, right. you know, it, it was those moments uh, in time. And um, and, when, yeah. and Jesse and Jesse and uh, and, and the star say Stokely. And Kwame were basically age mates. I think they both born in 40. I think Kwame was 41, Jesse 42, right. or around that same time, 1941, 42. And King had those young lieutenants. And, you know, I'm not as hard on Jesse Jackson as a lot of people. I remember in 19, we were Tennessee State in our own protest. Jesse came to town. Everybody know Jesse mm -hmm. going to play to the camera. Oh, yeah. Everybody That's know all this stuff. I mean, if you go get uh, Barbara Reynolds' book, the first edition, Jesse Jackson, America's David, then they made her rewrite it because she had stuff about Roberta Flack and all in there. And nobody wanted, you know, 
it, if you're gonna look in everybody's bedroom, and sometimes right. you just call that bedroom history. He said, I'm not interested in bedroom history, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, right. But 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 um, but Jesse King had these young cats, and of course, Bob Mukasa obviously lived this, yes. And yes. you see, even in the meetings where King would say, Jesse, you come sit next to me, right? But but, but after King is gone. It's nobody in that room can hold order on Jesse. Can't nobody look anybody who has spent any time around Jesse Jackson. You can say what you want about his personality. Right. That motherfucker, man, he, he, he can rap without notes. I'm yeah, saying Jesse yeah, will bring yeah. all the statistics, bring that shit together, put right. that heavy country accent on that shit, and have you saying, "Where the fuck do I go?" I seen Jesse, man. I mean, anyway, that's, we had to, we, yeah, we had to I had to come back, but I'm raising that to say this, of course. And of course, you know, Baba Kwame said to the day he passed, I remember Conrad World and went over to the Guinea for the funeral, said, you know, CIA gave me cancer. And mm, they were, right. they're the same age, but those age mates come, they come of age at a moment when the state launches a full scale assassination state vibe. We're going to end these Negroes. That's the right. fact that we even having this conversation is a testament to the strength of the race. Because they tried to wipe us the fuck out. And, 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 and that is what I'm talking about right there. Because yes. I, I know people are like, well, what do you mean? You know what I'm saying? Because of the fact that this is, you know, you know, because but for all practical purposes, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a rebel rouser. So they say, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, he's, sir. He's uncouth. He's, you know, he's wild. I'm calculated. I'm clear about exactly. what the fuck I'm doing. Exactly. You not clear what I'm doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's cool. That is the art of war. I don't, I don't need you. Believe what you want. Feel how you feel. I'm gonna get the job done, and 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 you know the thing is, I love when folks underestimate me. No question. You know what I'm saying it is the beautiful thing. You know, oh, I didn't, it's like you know, like I didn't know you had a mind. Like the fuck out of here. You, you think I'm just walking around talking about black power with a gun in my hand? You know what I'm saying? It's like right. we're, we're talking about system building. We're oh. talking about uh, uh, tumbling the 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 the, uh, the the current order. You know what I'm saying? And until we understand that, until we clear about what our roles are. Because, like you said, you know, we have to find the best parts. We gotta have, we gotta have points of unity. You know what I'm saying? Right. If, 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 if as long as you ain't working for the state, we 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 can we can we can you know we can come to some kind of terms. No question. Like like my man said, the difference between uh, differences between the uh, the people and the people are reconcilable, and the difference between the people and the state are irreconcilable. Irreconcilable. You know what I'm saying? And, so, and depending on the relationship, it's so funny because everybody don't come clean all the time. That's right. Because we both know a lot of people be talking that shit. And you look up and they, you, if you follow them for 24 hours, you'd be like, why didn't you just tell us? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now I'm suspicious now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm telling you out the gate. My contradictions got contradictions. But, 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 All of us. <laughs> but, but I'm understand. Saying, well, you should right. tell people. I mean, and, and right. of course it's different. But I mean, Joanne Robinson and, and them, they work for Alabama State. That's right. They found out about the Montgomery bus boycott because they used the mimeograph machine. That's right. And I'm saying now, I'm not saying everybody, the spook who sat by the door is fiction. God bless Sam Greenlee. I should, right. you know, but at yeah, the same yeah, time, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But when they bring you in the room, Anson Thompson used to always say this to me. He said, you know what? If you keep being successful at helping to organize and get people together, at some point they bring you into the room. That's right. <laughs> and it's like that room they bring you into in Kemet or any of y'all ever been someplace where they're going to sell you some shit. And they bring you in the room, the lights are off. Then all of a sudden they turn the lights on, some sparkly stuff, they blow some shit in your face, some yeah. cologne from and you can't and you leave that room having left all your money with some trinkets. That's right. <laughs> you weren't planning on buying shit. We weren't gonna buy shit, right? And right. then they came, what the fuck? Right. Like, right. But as the said, the trick is not to be immune to all that. The trick is to know before you go in that that's what's going to happen, and that might keep you out of the abyss. But make no mistake about it. We all know people who have the best intentions, but individuals don't beat institutions, man. That's right. They will fuck you up. And I say, in trouble, I'm in, I'm in, look, then I know we, we, we got to go, but I'm saying I am at a university. I'm at an HBCU. That's a contradiction. But I made a deliberate choice to be at a black one rather than a white one. And even in the black one, there are more contradictions. You got Negroes fighting over rank, fighting over tenure, fighting over credit for something they wrote that somebody 100 years ago wrote better than them. But they uh -huh. trusted nobody will go in the archives so they can parlay this. And I look at all, I'm the first in my family to go to college. If the shit burned down tomorrow, we'll find something else to do. It amazes right. me that the most revolutionary sounding academics are the Negroes who enjoy and want the prestige more than anybody. 
Let me tell you something, man. You know, and and, and I respect you because of the fact that, uh, like, like I, I was talking to uh, uh, Cindy McKinney a couple of days ago, and one of the things I told her, I said, "Listen, man, you know, I know a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? And folks always will. Why don't you give such get let get such and such on? And I'm like, man, dude, ain't gonna come on here because of the fact that." They're more concerned with their careers. No you can pop that shit with certain individuals. No you can go on certain people's shows and you can get away with that. No question. But if you love your career, I ain't the motherfucker you just wanna wanna hang out with. Hell because, no. Like like man said, you know, <laughs> when you take me to the dog show, you put on the bow tie and 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 manicure my nails. When I lock down on your ass and shit, he, man, I'm still a pit bull. Got to put you, you to sleep. So, <laughs> no so, question. So, so be clear about <laughs> what you're dealing with. But listen, um, you know, we we we'll do this for three hours. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Just, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's not eleven, but I guess we should say one more thing about Martin and Malcolm and yes, sir. That, yes, sir. Uh, and, and listen, before you go, before you even say that, now we're gonna have you back on here within the next oh. thirty days. Oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we in contact now, man. The reason I, I mean, it snuck up on me. You know this, man, and, and we see it with BPM. We said all the work you're yeah. doing. Once the virus hit, and we all went this way hundred percent of the time. The work expanded exponentially. That's right. We should have been able to predict it, but we didn't. Right. On. And so people are working harder now in many ways than we were before. Like I watched when uh, you all met up down in Atlanta. I guess mm-hmm. it's been about seven, eight months ago. It was last. Yeah, it was yeah. last year. Last about summer. A few months ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Few months ago. It wasn't seven, eight months ago. Yeah, yeah. It was last summer, right? Yeah. And and since then. Just watching, listening, learning, and I and I try to watch regularly. I mean, I I have morning classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then Mondays and Wednesdays I'm usually tied up in the mornings as well. So, but I know Wednesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. No, no, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Is that the three days that y'all do? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then yeah, I mean, yeah. I like we, it. We're gonna be expanding, so right and on. My, oh, no question. Yeah, but yeah. but, but I, even if I miss it live, I will try to come back around. Um, I appreciate that. Brother. Oh no, well, listen, yes, I appreciate yes, you, man, and I'm I'm one among many. But I'm just saying, and it's growing, of course. But the thing that you realize is, we were working seven days a week before, but now right. we're working like seven days a week, twenty hours a day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I, I don't believe in the language of self care and all this, but what I right. do believe right. in, of course, is the thing that kept Martin alive. What what Kwame Ture used to always say, you know, if you uh take care of the people if you work for the people the people will take care of you the people will work for you and so um we know what keeps us able to do this is the same spirit of it isn't really sacrifice but it's the same spirit of love for our people that martin Luther king definitely had uh that he saw modeled in people like howard thurman and um and benjamin mays uh people like uh nanny helen's burroughs as i mentioned mm-hmm. um and then malcolm that love for the people Sometimes at great cost, right. but that love, and that's what made John Henry Clark, I mean, John Henry Clark loved Malcolm X. I mean, he wrote about him, he talked about him, but I mean, sitting and listening to Dr. Clark talk about Malcolm, there was a love there that comes from sharing. And I can't imagine what somebody uh, like Kochiyama, Mama Kochiyama would, I, mean, I don't even know what that, I mean, you know, that love, that love yeah. is what gives us the energy to keep going, man. So I just want to thank you for letting me, you know, come in and hang out with you. We're going to definitely do this again soon in the next couple of weeks. Definitely, brother. I appreciate you. Uh, And and according to the chat, they appreciate you. They, they, uh, you need a spot over here, so on and so on. They, they, you got them hot tonight. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, I'm here, man. I mean, look, look, what good is it? The only, the only regret I have now is we do so much now on this and having conversations and talking and it cuts into the reading time so now when i get off here i'm gonna sit and read till i can't see no more <laughs> hey, that, that's right on hey for the folk the folks that's checking you out uh for those who who's uh if, if it's their first time checking you out what's the channel that they need to see you all on the regular uh in class with car what, what yeah, well, the, the in class thing we do um and it's and again it's just a kind of a it started as we all start trying to see what would generate and my thing is you know Let's just spread information. Let's have conversations. So uh, every Saturday from noon until usually noon to 2, 2.30, we're on YouTube. And uh, right. Karen, on Karen Hunter, her the channel that she had already had. So you can just you know, Google or look on Twitter. You know, we got a hashtag uh, tag in class with Carr. Narrative is, you know, I think our idea was rather than go Patreon or go some of these platforms that Europeans control, 
Mm-hmm. Let's build something completely new so that once it's established, we can start having people come over. And then when they say, uh, look, y'all done cussed, so we can't have, we'd be like, fuck y'all. We got it going over here. We control. I mean, so it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious, right? So it's like, well, if y'all want to support us, come to Patreon. And of course, as we know, YouTube is a thief in terms of revenue. I mean, so I mean, <laughs> so we figure at least build something slowly. You know I mean? So I'm not saying, you know, if, if, if folks, you know, have a cup. No, 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 no. I'm going to pause there and say this. I'll end with this. So if y'all want to check out in class with Karin on weekends, please do support Black Power Media. Hey, brother, let's, we, let's do that. Hey, let's just do that. Right and and, and, I, and I, I, say the same, I say the same thing in reverse. Again, get give get a greetings to uh to Can Hunter. I haven't met her yet, but uh oh you will now, look, look this is like the Avengers. First they had yeah. Iron Man, then they had Captain America, and then, and then when they dropped the Avengers, everybody knew all the people in the right yeah, on. Right we, on. we already know what it is, brother. We just right <laughs> on. let's let's go, let's go. No hey brother, definitely appreciate you. You know, enjoy that reading tonight. Oh, no, you know, no doubt, no and, doubt. And, and uh, you know, like I said, we will rap with you uh as 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 uh Elder brother and OG and ancestors would say, "Look for us in the whirlwind." You know Garvey, what I mean. So baby, stay on point. Love you, love you and love you too, uh, the revolutionary love, love. Stay on point. No doubt. So no right doubt. Now. See you soon, Bob. Yes, indeed. Yes. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, you've been checking out Riot Starter TV uh, live. Our brother, Doctor Greg Carr. We said we was gonna do an hour. We put in two and some change. How about that? You know what I'm saying? And we would have went, went a little bit further, but we know that uh, you all got to get up and, and watch the Remix Morning Show in the morning, so we didn't want to pressure you too much. But make sure you tap in. Uh, share this video, please, because of the fact that I think that uh, it was a beautiful opportunity to uh, to learn uh, because of the fact that there's so many different uh, freedom fighters and, and educators out there who have been putting in work that, that, that we need to... Uh, acknowledge you know what i'm saying and make sure you support our patreon which is uh at blackpowermedia.org again if it's your first time tuning in check out the archives uh check out black power media subscribe and all that good stuff and uh i see you all first thing in the morning 8 a.m right here on black power media remix morning show we appreciate y'all revolutionary love and salute we out Thank you.